I would like to open the select board meeting on uh, uh, Wednesday, March 14th, here in the town hall at 535 with a, a joint meeting with the um, Capital Improvement uh, Planning Committee. And if, if everyone doesn't mind, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, go ahead, Jeff. We have a capital improvement plan that's been recommended by the capital improvement uh, plan committee. And I'd like to just review that. This is for FY 2019, and it's the projects plan. If you have a copy, I'd like to start on the second page, please. And these are items that have been carried forward from prior to FY, uh, FY 18, 2018. And these projects, money have been allocated, and what we try to do is we try to do a follow-up uh, to catch up on where we were with the various projects. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look, going from the top down, the capital GIS, which is the mapping, and that's in progress and hopefully is going to be completed in FY18. The capital streetscape planning uh, was done 2007, that's on hold. The rekeying of town halls 2017 should be completed March 2018. The Deerfield Elementary School generator is on hold at the moment. The Deerfield Elementary door hardware, which was a 2014 request, uh, that is in progress. Money was appropriated, and hopefully that will be done in the near, near future. Tilton Library carpet, that was 2017, and the entry area of the carpet was completed March 2018. The Tilton Library air conditioning, 2017, that's on hold unless existing units expire, uh, and or the review of a new library. If you flip to the front page, and this again is just doing some house cleaning to catch up on what was approved last year. Uh, for this year for FY 2018 and the first item on that is the new voting machine and what was uh, approved was 6,500 what was spent was 5,200 uh, the the new voting machine is here it came in at 5,900 and fortunately, we were able to get Barbara was able to get a $500 trade-in for the old voting machine, so that came out to a cost of $5,200. The highway mower is $26,000 from last year, and $26,000 was spent. That is a wash. That was a first year because EverSource uh, provides the $26,000 uh, payback of that investment and that's a that's an agreement uh, with the town in Eversource. The transfer station salt shed 7,000 was requested at the time and approved and 7,000 was spent. The only thing they have left to do with the salt shed on the repairs is paint in the spring. Go down to Deerfield Elementary School, and it's on a three-year plan, replaced flooring, and 17,000 was uh, requested, approved, and 17,000 has been spent. The replacement on door hardware, 12,500 was requested, 12,500 was approved. At the moment, for the billing, uh, we have billed $1,435, which has been spent. But that is a work in progress. They are working on it. Uh, Brenda spoke with 
Patty Kavanaugh just the other night, and there's more billings that should be coming in uh, when she gets those. The entry foyer drainage for the for the Deerfield Elementary uh, requested was 6,500, and 65 was approved. Spent though was 1,318 dollars, and that was the highway department was able to handle that job. So it came in a lot less than what was expected. The medication administration pumps in, at SKIMS uh, was requested $21,000. Approved was $21,000. Nothing has been spent at this time. It's a carryover because there's some regulations that the state's reviewing. They have not determined exactly what type of pump will qualify to meet those regulations. So that is put on hold presently. And on the last one for FY 2018, uh, power ambulance cot loaders, there, is, there was a request for two at 50,000 total. Total spent was $49,606. Uh, somebody was going to ask probably about the third ambulance. The third ambulance that uh, will be ordered or has been ordered has will come with the cot, with the power cot. It did come it with did, it. And it did come with the power cot, excuse me. So, yep. so all three ambulances have power cots. So that catches us up to 2018. First two columns, FY 2019. We had the uh, town office slash police department generator and the request was for 53,000. The recommendation was for 53,000. The senior center carpet and tile project. The request was 8,300. Uh, the only reason why that number is in here is because there is an issue with asbestos over at the senior center for that carpet tile replacement. And it's just unpredictable. We don't know what they're gonna end up with with them pulling up. So we left that number in there so everybody's it's aware safe. of it because there could be some cost overrun on that. Hopefully not, but we just figured we'd be a little cautious with it. The highway mower is into the second year of their agreement with Eversource. So requested was $26,000, recommended was $26,000. Transfer station fence request, and that's for the fence all the way around the, the uh, transfer station. And they've talked about doing uh, a second entrance, so they have an entrance and an exit, and that's included in the $12,000. They're concerned about traffic flow up at the landfill, especially on Saturday. So uh, the $12,000 was requested and the 12,000 was recommended. The compactor, again, at the landfill, these are public highway, uh, public works, excuse me, request, 17,000 for a compactor and 17,000 was recommended. The compactor on site now we rent and uh, that roughly costs, I believe around 4,000 per year. And so it looked like the compactor could have a buyback of uh, a period of about four years and it seemed to make a lot of sense to do that. Uh, as far as the compactor itself, it was explained that they're a pretty basic item and they shouldn't be running into major repair costs. On the replacement of the 1999 Freightliner, it's a dump and plow truck with a wing plow on it. The request came in at $205,095 and recommended was $205,095. The church 
senior slash community center. 25,000 was requested and 20, 25,000 was recommended. And that's just in case we need to have any feasibility studies done once that's turned over uh, to the town. The Tilton Library had a request for drawings of $633,810 and the uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee recommend that they resubmit uh, in December here for next year because we just felt it was a year early. Deerfield Elementary School requested for 2019 17,000 this is a three-year project ongoing this would be the second year of that project 17,000 requested for replacement flooring and 17,000 recommended replacement door hardware again requested $12,500 recommended $12,500. Again, this is a second year of a three-year plan ongoing. And then SKIMS, we have $145,000 here in request. And we put that on hold because we need to have additional information. Those requests are all related to the new uh, ambulance building being done here. Uh, on 5 and 10 and Zach and I discussed this a little bit and we just wanted to make sure that people were aware that these requests may be needed uh, nothing definite yet because we cannot obviously get that information until that's turned over to the town as a gift so basically we just wanted to make sure that they were in place and people were aware of it That does not reflect on the on the total, obviously, because that's on hold. So, uh, two other things: the ambulance was recommended at fifty-seven thousand, and it was—I mean, requested at fifty-seven thousand. It was approved at fifty-seven thousand. You will not see it on the sheet because I spoke with Brenda, our town accountant. And where you will see it, it shows up in FY 2021 at the 285,000. Okay. And uh, with an enterprise fund, I guess my understanding from Brenda was that we could not show the 57,000. We can't show that until the until the year that's going to be purchased. So we know we have a we just have to keep uh, track annual. Of it. Right, and we you'll we see have a, there, but yeah, we have a total of 108 so far, and if right. we add another 57, then you add that into the 108, so that you know we're saving for our ambulance. So that brings the total of the recommended uh, capital projects plan for FY 2019 to 375,895 dollars. The, uh, the same evening that was presented a week ago, uh, the Finance Committee met and they approved the $375,895. But also, you'll see at the bottom there, the CIPC is recommending a transferring of $500,000 to the Capital Stabilization Fund. That is simply a recommendation from the committee and that was discussed briefly at the finance committee meeting and right now that is on hold for further review. So that's where we are to that point. Comments, questions? I think I tried to hit everything as appropriately as I could. Just a very quick question. <clears throat> the, uh, for FY 2021 20, and 22, South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plan, 624 2020, is that, that's, and 10 million for 21, and an additional 10 million for 22. Is that correct? 
That's yeah. right. That's what they have there for for a long term plan. And it, are those ex exact numbers? I can't mm -hmm. speak to that. Uh, but uh, obviously, I think everybody in town knows that something needs to be done. Yeah. Bruce? Yes. Bruce? Come up to the mic. I had a couple of questions. I guess it's the uh, most important ones are what I don't see on here. Can you come up to the mic? Bruce. Pardon? F Pat is up? always asking people if they're going to speak to please come up and speak okay. to the mic. Yeah, Thanks. Any of the three mics are open. I distributed your information you sent me late this afternoon. Point of ice. Next Have a seat. <clears throat> Welcome. Okay, I guess a couple questions I have is uh, what is not on here, and uh, one being, um, you know, since I sit on a sewer study committee with some of the other members here, I don't see any allotment for um, Captain Lathrop Pump Station, which has been told time and time again it's critical stage. Uh, and the other thing is um, any monies or that it had even been referred to the capital plan for doing an assessment for the wastewater treatment plant uh, for this coming. We do have a couple people coming in um, tomorrow night for a meeting and I was under the impression that we we're going to try to move forward with that but I see nothing on this uh, capital plan. We, we had no requests related to the sewage treatment plants. And that's why it's concerned so this is off for at least another year everything. I think we, for us, our, on our committee, as Jack stated, uh, the request that came, so everybody understands the process, uh, our town administrator put out a notice in, and asked for a request for the five-year plan in this coming capital improvement year, and the request came in. We took those requests that came in, reviewed them, and you see them as they are. As far as what you're asking, Bruce, uh, you're absolutely right. We did not see anything. And so I don't think as far as a committee that we really have the exp expertise to uh, try to address that. I, I would have to turn it over to the sewer commissioners and maybe they could address the concerns. And I do understand there's some concerns there. The only thing that I can address is the Captain Lathrop pump station uh, the town did receive a bid of just over $16,000 last August, but nothing's happened. Um, I don't know why a request wasn't put forward, but I actually thought that that repair was going to be made last fall, um, and it still hasn't been done. Um, I don't know. Trevor might have had some conversations with the highway director about it. I, don't I did. I had spoke to him, and I think, I believe he said he had that. I could be speaking out of turn, but I thought he said he had that in his budget. For, to, to pay, and he um, was in, moving. In other words, he had funds from the sewer department. Correct. He had sewer fees. He had sewer, sewer funds that, that were going to do that, and he was, I guess it got too late in the season, or however it went, there was some process that got involved that slowed it up, and he was afraid to start that in the winter with the cold weather, and because he said he may have to pump it on the on top of the ground through a hose to, to bypass that for a short time, and he just didn't want to get below temperature, and and have to run into an issue. So I think he was waiting to a little bit warmer weather to get that done this spring. So as far as I know, that's, but I can't, I don't want to speak for him, but so, that's kind so of. So just to clarify that funds can be spent from the sewer department, from sewer department fees without a request to the CIPC, according to the bylaw. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that would have Is been done right? last, it should have been done last year anyways. So I don't know. I mean, how do you handle that when you have a emergency, a, a emergency during the year? I mean, it's an emergency if, I don't know, when the... It's under 10,000? Yeah. No, it was 16. Oh, 16,000. Okay. Yes. Thank Bruce, you. Is right. Bruce, good question. Well, I guess my point is, is, is there's a process there, and you can understand an emergency situation, but it evidently has not been an emergency situation. It's been going on for two years. And has it ever been presented to the capital uh, uh, committee for uh, recommendation? I, I think no. it's been I discussed. Don't so. I don't believe so. No, so, I don't believe it has. a lot, but well, I don't think it's ever. Well, so it's a capital request. asset that has not been gone through the pro proper process. Uh, basically, is what your answer is. And well, 
Well, maybe or maybe not. Visit. But I, I think I agree. I agree with I. I like that you're bringing this up, because I think there's a flaw in the process. I mean, and that's it, what I'm saying. There's, it's, it's, there's a flaw in the process. In other words, the the sewer department comes under the purview of the highway department. So the the actual manager of the sewage treatment plants can't make a request to the CIPC directly. It has to come from the highway department. And personally, I think that the, the manager of the sewage treatment plants ought to be a separate department equal to the other department managers so that he could come to us with requests. It's a, it's a public way, works department right. Right. It's a, which, which oversees yeah. treatment plants, transfer station, highway. Right, but why? Cemetery. But it, I don't think that's working. Is what I'm saying. I understand that's the way it is, but I don't. But well, other is it is it funded differently through? Uh, it's not through taxation. It's through fees, correct? So it's not well, it's something through, the whole town uh, votes on and well, decides it's through on. Through fees until you get into so much money. Correct, but this isn't. This is sixteen thousand. This is not a lot of right. money. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's sixteen thousand a lot to anybody, but this is but, but I think seven hundred thousand dollars. Bruce is addressing not yeah. just the sixteen thousand, but the but the overall um, process. process of of maintaining the cap the the capital investment in the sewage treatment system. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the the public works department has to be appropriate at town meeting, just the same as any other department, your uh, department or anything mm -hmm. else. And anything that goes, any expenditures through for the sewer department have to be appropriated through town meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that this is a fixed asset by definition in your own bylaws that is circumventing the process. And I'm just using this because I, you know, it needs to be done. So I'm not trying to dissuade. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just. This so is how a failure you in the process. Is what so I'm how do we fix it? And how do we amend the uh, by, bylaw the, to fix this so that we can work on these <clears throat> kind of projects? Well, uh, the, Ed, can I add one thing? I think it's I just, the bylaws. May I add one thing to this as well? Is that I think a lot of this, Bruce, was going to fall under the sewer study committee that we've been waiting 16 months for some sort of direction on. So I think the the Captain Lathrop, the expenses down there, some sort of budget on what we're going to do. That committee has been meeting for 16 months, and right. we still have yet to move on anything. I don't. Well, I've not had one recommendation brought to me yet. Well, so that tomorrow can, night is going to be great because we'll be able to get some feedback, and we can start getting this process rolling. But, but we, I understand your frustration. And I share it. We did get that though it, back in July. Uh, you know, I had a meeting with Kevin and uh, an engineer and an electrician, and we discussed this, and we brought it forward to get I it done. I remember that, and it it just. It, it hasn't get done. So. Yeah, I think if I remember right, he was a he was afraid that the pump wasn't going to be right, or the grinder wasn't going to be a, right. There was a difference just, of opinions. There was, and it and it slowed it up until it was too cold to do. But um, but I don't know about the other process and whether it should go through. And sounds like it would normally come. Well, didn't that. it come up? Excuse me, but didn't it come up as an emergency? It did originally during the yeah. middle. You know, some point yeah. in the year. I don't know if this was before I arrived or it was, after. It, it's been an ongoing problem. And, right. uh, you know, the pumps were failing and stuff. So it didn't seem to make sense to keep replacing five or $6,000 pumps and all of the man hours that went into, you know, maintaining that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we sought out a pump that wouldn't need that. But isn't this something that, you know, I mean, I know it's kind of the last minute, but couldn't we fill out paperwork tomorrow and submit it? I mean, it, we're still before we have a finalized yeah, it's budget. Yeah, it's a public hearing, so it, that's what it's for public we, to get, input. Right. I guess what I'm trying to emphasize is is there is a process that I don't feel is being uh, followed, and uh, they say I'm not opposed to this. It's something that definitely needs to be. Had. I'm opposed. You know, I'm concerned that it wasn't at least brought forward, even if it's a uh, uh, such as uh, the skims thing. More information needed because it calls for any feasibility studies or anything purchases of a fixed asset to be brought before the CIPC. And I don't care if it was just a line item that not enough information available, but it, it had been addressed by the CPIs, CIPC to, to, to fall in line with the way the bylaws are written. The other thing is this assessment that we're talking about tomorrow night. I understand there's no price or anything, but without that being at least a line item being shown on this capital improvement, 
technically. You mean for the study? Nothing, nothing yeah. can be done. Agreed. That and was and uh, for at least another year, I can't Bruce. award any to, to uh, go forward on this or anything. And this is what concerns me. And that was a subject we were hoping to bring up today. Is that it's a concern of all of us that it's not on here as well. That for I don't, we were stabbing at maybe ninety thousand dollars for a study, but you know it's going to be a lot of money for clarifier and we, we need a lot at that plant and I'm, I'm anxious to hear tomorrow it's I wish these meetings were reversed but right but I, uh, you know, I don't <laughs> think you're going to come up with a number but I, like I say I it hasn't even been addressed it should have been put on there what's your deadline December or January yeah. or something like that Did is, it, there, is, is a hold uh, item I, I, I was think. it discussed to put money at the sewer no. study committee meetings no for another study no there's never been a discussion yeah. in the sewer study committee that this would be rolling down the, the pike to have another there, assessment done. There was, there was discussion mm -hmm. about having another assessment done. But no, when no we but haven't we have had a no, recommendation no, to the sewers no, committees. No clue as to the cost. Because, no. to be honest, there was, it was quite an ambitious project. I mean, the last couple that we did, one included just the treatment plant, and the other one included both treatment plants and infrastructure, you know, and... Um, as being part of that committee, uh, we, we felt that the whole assessment needed to get done, but that that plant needed attention right away. Mm -hmm. And um, it was of my opinion that we, you know, try to, you know, incorporate the whole thing, but put a priority on that plant and what improvements we can do as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I had, I had, uh, Bruce, I had brought forward the, the Aga Monster or Channel Clearer. Mm -hmm. because I read through all the notes that was and 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 I brought it forward but then you know we were going out with the I mean it just I didn't want to put you know have everyone vote on it and put money aside for it because I wasn't convinced that that was really maybe that was the way to go I wanted to wait and see what the engineers had to say because you know we we're still spending two hundred thousand dollars. I can understand that, but all I was saying is it should have been on there. So well, it well, was, it was under, originally. It and was and it and it was on the Slickman's initiative because I felt we had to put something down. I mean, we were doing nothing. Okay, because but I don't then, see it on here. That's what. Well, it's it not on this forward, one. It came forward on the Slickman's initiative, <laughs> and um, but I didn't have well, enough. I mean, I didn't feel that I could advocate for it as the correct way to spend our money because I didn't have enough information. And, and, it, and we were gonna spend money for engineers to tell us what to do, so why would we spend money for this based on my just reading through the notes? Yeah, I mean, I'm, it was a best, best case scenario kind of, for the what I, reason, I read through the notes. For the, the same notes. reason you put yeah. a holding place on the SCEMS budget. Um, I can show but, you but what But the manager of SCEMS, <clears throat> made a proposal right and this is so this is the hole right. that we well, that's a, that's what i'm saying nobody the, right. the manager of the sewage the, treatment plants has no standing so to make a request but but it's the uh, it could have been made by the sewage does. by the sewage com, the, the sewer commissioners or the, anyway, or the enough highway of that department. we all admit there's a, there's a, a little glitch in the system that needs to be corrected or attended to uh, my other question is. But wait, before you move we on, have, do, do you, may I? We have two people two other, that would like to make comments. Correct. Bruce, you had your hand up first, and then we'll get to Skip. Uh, I believe in the highway, uh, the highway department, uh, sewer, wastewater treatment plant budget, there is an engineering consulting fee line that is funded. There's money in it. We haven't approved it yet. But there is money in that budget for consulting. There is, but it had not gone mm -hmm. through the capital improvement. It did not go through capital. And we haven't, as a finance committee, reviewed it yet. Bruce, here's our. Um, Skip. Is the possibility that this, what's the number, $17,000? Is there any FY18 budget? There is no number that I'm aware of. No, no, no. Any FY18 yeah. sewer budget? Does anyone know? Did we have that covered? At least that's from what I understood. Kevin thought he had enough money to deal with that in his budget for we Captain did, Lathrop. For Captain mean? Lathrop. Yeah. Cap well, two items: Captain Lathrop, and then a and then a study of right. money for engineers to do something on these plants. I mean, I, I don't have the budget here, so I, I 
Well, we had 20. Have, no, have, have we, has the CIPC ever been? We have, we, there was a request for 50,000 for 2019, which I think is too low based on what we're asking. But that's what Kevin has in the budget. For which? For the captain what about the current budget? We, have we don't have budget. it. Is there anything in the FY18 budget that would cover this expense? He has 26000 for engineering consultant, financial model, and IPP. Well, uh, well it's like thirty-two. That. There's twenty-six in our budget this year, and then he There's also asking for thirty-two for next year. In, so if you add those eight, two together, well, in, well there is twenty-six in, in the budget now that could be spent. Let me months. let me correct. There's also ninety thousand in the sewer line pumping station maintenance fund. That was ninety thousand for last year, and that's where I think he's pulling the money from for fixing Captain Lathrop. I could be wrong. I don't want to speak for him. That's what I believe. But, yes, and I believe that too. Um, so, I mean, potentially you have some money, but it, we were still thinking, going back to fixing your issue. Would you like to see right. it come before and, the and CIPC? I, I don't. I don't think that's enough. Well, I mean, I, that's I'm, why we're. Sort I, of I don't. I don't think these things have ever come. That's, that's, no, that that's not. That's not, not the subject here. I know there's money in the in, yeah. the, in the public yeah. works yeah. department yeah. for that. The, what I'm saying is, 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 is there's a process. The bylaws were changed last year to specifically address this situation, and if you have a copy, it's 10-16B. Uh, that was separated out of A, so it basically says, forget about uh, non-recurring and everything else. It says, all purchase of capital equipment or fixed assets must be presented for study by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, regardless of the source of funding. So that would hold true of that. It would hold true of the police cruiser or anything else. No, we decided on the police cruiser that was operational. At one point in time, but then now your bylaws changed last year. This was a change last year. But we still excluded the cruiser because we, at, at the current usage and the current pattern of how we operate is part of the operational budget. But who's we excluded? I mean, what is good as a bylaw if you're going to vote to exclude certain things? I, I see his point. I mean, yeah, I, I know, just, but I think as a, but as that's a what happens capital when, committee, we, we agreed that it was under operational. That has been bantied back and forth for years, and, and <clears throat> we decided that that... <laughs> It's in the minute somewhere that the cruiser goes under that his did operation. Not this year. Well, that, that's no, that no, no. This has been battled back. No, no. This was like three years. It's been battled. It's been ferocious. Oh yes, no. It was now, three it years ago. I know. It was like three years ago or four years ago. Right. Maybe. Many. But I know. Now the it, bylaws have changed, and that so that changes that. That's a good question. Yeah. Well. So I'm just saying, and there again, I know the reason for it. I'm just saying that people need to start reading these bylaws before they make the decisions. Okay, uh, you, you, you know you're backing yourself in a hole. We create bylaws to create a process uh, to keep open government, and then everybody decides, well, it doesn't it doesn't uh, pertain to me. And I, you know, it's no, it's just hard to or, write a bylaw that covers every single situation. Right, right. And, and, and and that we need, need some need to, flexibility, and and. And that's why we're having you do the bylaw review, right. uh, Bruce, because we have you, we have these problems that occur, just like, you know, the SCEMS agreement. What do we do yeah. when we? I'm sorry I didn't bring this up earlier because, I, but I really didn't get to it till today when I was looking through, and it's like, well, wait a minute, now, there is a process. But so, so what we have to do is I'm, maybe I'm we should bring sh forward some way to correct that's this. That's what I'm looking, basically, right. saying is look at we need to get through this year. But we need to really look at some of the stuff next year and get back into to following the process. I agree with you. And that's, uh, and that's yeah. what your committee is doing, correct? It wouldn't hurt for us to, as committees, work a little closer again and have the Capital Improvement Committee review, review our bylaws and the wording and the intent of the wording. Not that we're lawyers, but at least we can get a basic framework and then sit down with the uh, bylaw uh, review committee and discuss that with them well and then bring it forward if we need to to legal counsel or whatever the case may be so we're all on the same page 
because Bruce is right. There should be a, a process, and it should be applied across well, the board. Well, we did bring this up. Actually, we did bring this up about emergency situations and how do we deal with things that occur mid-year, because we have that December right. 1st deadline. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult in the operation of just normal life <clears throat> that all your requests have to be in by December 1st when right. you might not ha know that you have an issue or a situation until March, you know, or whatever. Right. Right. So but it is really important that right. we have. But these have turned into non-emergencies is what I'm saying. So while we have everybody anyway, together. Thank you for your time. You Wait, okay. I, I'm just going to use the example of the, the skims equipment. I mean, we have fairly close prices. So I, I feel that it's totally appropriate that they give these information, these numbers to the Capital Improvement Committee to go forward. But in the case of the Sewer Study Committee, the only thing that we had was the last study we paid for was around, I think, $235,000. 123. 123? 123. 123, the last one was 100. I have that in your, in your. Okay, well, 123. So if, if we just randomly <coughs> pick that number and put that forward and then in anticipation that we were going to do something with the church and put that number. I guess what I'm saying is if mm -hmm. all the departments put a high ballpark random number out there, you, you know, you could be looking at millions of dollars and think, well, you know, how are we going to afford this until if that's the process and that's the way it needs to be, it just seems like it, it creates a lot of confusion and a lot of, you know, um, yes. You know, yes, interest in the community and where are we going to get this money from? However, the highway department needed a new truck. They researched the truck. Chuck did a tremendous job. He gave us a 160-page report. We considered it, and we considered other options, and then we recommended it. Why couldn't Keith Milne give us a proposal for a Headworks that he proposes, that he researches the cost, et cetera, et cetera, and then we consider it, and we, we recommend it or not? And it's not, and it's not just the headworks. It's I think that's I, I think, I think that's, that's what was done previously, and that's where. And there, as a matter of fact, we problem. did recommend <laughs> X number of dollars right. for a headworks. Right. I don't know years ago. Yeah. And that's, right, but yeah. no one believed it. But, but my my point is, is <laughs> right. that my point is, and, is and that yet nothing the, happens. And 16 months later, we still have no information the, the on the sewer, sewer study. But the sewer study, study committee, crazy. the sewer. Bruce, go ahead. I'm uh, sorry. Just want to correct. Uh, you don't. Waste for treatment was for bid ready plans and specifications for the headwork program. Mm -hmm. And that is sitting on the shelf and cannot be built. Correct. So we have spent that money and we can't use it. And maybe. And is, is that the process that kind of brought that forward? No. That process was prior to the committee. No, not your committee. I'm just no. saying, is it is that is it the That's you know, is it the, the manager of the of the wastewater treatment plant? Did they is that where that no. generated from? Okay. No, with, with input, very little definitely input. Definitely had input from, into that. <laughs> well, that's a whole other subject. And and it, just to defend the sewer study committee, yes, we did spend a year and a half studying. Okay, to the point of. Yeah, I think everybody wanted to resign at the end of it, okay? <laughs> and, and after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on studies from various engineering firms, and um, it, it's, there, there is a plan that Keith Milne has presented, and it's, it's um, he has an extensive plan and an extensive um, description of the of what he thinks that the sewage treatment plant needs and, and I, don't, I don't understand why we don't trust him more to me he's well, an extremely capable person I agree a highly trained capable person and but you saw that's exactly what happened with our last one Keith had a lot of input into that plan and all his experience and all his qualifications Sure didn't pick up on the fact that it was an eight million gallon a day plant. How come? Well, you know, and, and I mean I that's mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go on, but you yeah, know you were there. There was a laundry list of things like that. So, and hopefully tomorrow night when we have our yeah. meeting on that, that right. all those questions can be answered. 
and we can move forward as far as a sewer study committee uh, at that point. So I think, I think as of tonight, myself, you know, we could talk about this for another five hours and not get any further. Okay. I'd like to move this forward and, sure. you know, see what happens with the sewer study committee tomorrow do, night. While this is open, do we want to put a recommendation in for $90,000 for a study? I don't want to wait another year, or is it something we can come to the, you know, I don't think it's something we, it would be appropriate to go to the reserve fund for. I mean, if we're anticipating, we know something's coming, we've got to plan for it somehow. I don't know where, if it only comes from reserves. I'm not great about where the money comes from, but. Um, well, the money would come from the sewer, sewer reserves. reserves. Sewer reserves. reserves. The money's yeah. there. It's just, but it's just that it needs we need to, to be a process. process. Okay. So would we. I do. Let me let me state because we're on camera in that the uh, CIPC at the beginning of the year when we spoke about this in our deadlines mm -hmm. as far as when things had to be submitted by because we also had a schedule as far as a, a capital improvement committee that we were trying to keep also yep. uh, we did say. And correct me if I'm wrong, please, all of you on the committee. Uh, we did discuss this as far as in cases of extreme emergencies that we could review items later in the year after that submittal date. But we did not want to make that a habit. We sent correct. a message to people that they had to get the request in on time for our, to allow us as a committee to do our work as needed. I understand Bruce's point that he brought up that <clears throat> is this really an emergency because it's been ongoing? Right. Can we classify it as an emergency? I guess that's the question being because for some reason through the process we did not address that either. Several people I think missed this. It's just not the capital improvement committee. Agreed. I, I, Agreed. I think it's that there was several steps along the way that this has been missed. So I think, and I don't know what the public opinion is, but I think that maybe, and that's gonna be up to the committee, are you willing to entertain this under an emergency situation, knowing that we probably need something in that line item? And I'm not. Otherwise, we'll have to wait till a special right. town Otherwise, meeting. Right. You're going to have to do a special, a special town meeting. And I hate to see to, you know, the, the expense of a special that. town meeting if we can address it now. But how, Jeff? How would that make things different? A special town meeting because it still didn't meet your deadline and it didn't go through the capital. Right. Meeting. No. I'm, I'm, so going I'm, to a special town it'd meeting. It'd be just the appropriation of the money. I guess. If it's on, if it's on this, uh, I guess I'm not seeing that. Right. Do we even have an estimate for what the costs will be for any type of planning? No, we don't have an no, engineering I mean, firm we just, we just, voting on something that I we have, cool. have no information on whatsoever. But, but that, that was why we, I, we have a price on the Captain Lathrop, which is already in the budget. Plus, yeah. right. right, right. Which already from last supposedly year. Kevin's going to cover with his budget for. I mean, so Skip, we need to have some money aside or else we're going to wait another year to do anything when that plant needs to be. Right. So we just don't know. Just so I, I, I agree with you. We, we have no idea because it's been a long time and we've been waiting for some sort of ballpark to get moving. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this. The last plan that was overbuilt was one hundred and twenty three thousand. And that was for what, an eight million gallon a minute or I think well, but there was a lot of things I mean that included the building have to be voted right. tonight or is it something that we could vote on after the, the next uh, Matt has after a they, Can I meet tomorrow a recommendation? you've got a meeting tomorrow night to discuss the sewer correct right no, we well just vote on it it's to that. hear from con potential consultants it's a very early step in the process and then I don't think they're going to uh, give us a number on things. what it's going to cost to do an assessment but we'll see it's very and I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the information. I don't know when the last sewer study was done. And it sounds like they designed a couple the plant years that ago. was too big. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Part of my frustration is listening to this over and over again. We do a study, we don't do anything with it. Correct. We do a study, we don't do anything with it. If we do a study, we should do something with it. <coughs> that being said, maybe with the consultants or the folks tomorrow night, if there's some way that you guys can figure out and throw a dart at a number, even if it's a placeholder, it was $123,000 last time to get something built. I don't know, is the number 125? Is it 150? Put something on here. If you needed to add more to get it done later, I think it's an easier sell to say, hey, look, we estimated 125. We need another 25 to get it done and move it along. But something, but if you can come to that tomorrow night, and then if the Capital Improvement Committee would be so kind as to review that after it's submitted, instead of pushing this thing down the road for another year, I gotta tell you, I appreciate seeing stuff out for the next four and five years. I just got a, a real wake up call with $10 million two years in a row for a sewer plant and then another seven or eight for a library. These are the kind of things that I'm gonna ask the select board finance capital to educate the voters on so we don't go to a meeting. Everybody wants a library, which is great, and I'm not here to argue for or against it, but before we make decisions, it'd be nice to know what's coming three, four, and five years down the line. So we're making an educated decision, not that we're being asked to do something, not knowing two years from now we're going to spend eight or ten million dollars on something that may be more pressing or, or more urgent for the town. We need some kind of a long-range plan. I think this is a start. I think we need to get better at it. No one can budget in your homes. We all budget at home. We all know that the roof's got to be replaced and, and furnace has got to be replaced. We budget for that. Yes, emergencies come up, but if we can budget out and get an idea of what's coming, it just is more education so we can make these decisions from a better standpoint. Matt, thank, thank you very much. Yes, I agree you, with Matt. you 100%. <laughs> yep. Everybody thank you, Matt. Agrees. So where does that leave us? Well. I would recommend what Matt recommended, that, um, uh, and I did have that in my notes to the board for their meeting, <clears throat> for their discussion with you in a joint meeting, to put uh, a number in as a placeholder. <clears throat> and that's where we came up with the 90,000 because it was a scaled down version of the other plan. But it, it makes sense to say just like 100 or 125 or something. I mean, because we really don't know. I think it makes sense to after tomorrow, then we can meet again. Well, what, the question know. is, in terms of the bylaws, if a public Bruce, hearing, if you have right. your public hearing tonight, do you have? You, would you have to have another? It, it would be, I think, no, getting I too know. late in terms right, of the time to not sort of make <clears throat> this decision tonight. If you're keeping the plan open, whether you'd have to have another plan, another public hearing. Put it in the newspaper in the notice if you're going to change anything after I, we're having a public hearing tonight so you know what i would i would make a motion that we put a placeholder in as a member of the cipc um for 125,000 for a sewer treatment study motion has been made is that seconded anybody want to second that i'll second that <laughs> <laughs> Not here, but I'm. Right. Uh, I'm I will second. Me. I will second that only for uh, the purpose of discussion here, seeing how it is open. And any comments, questions, Bruce? Uh, there, uh, there again, according to Brian, I think that the that should be an amendment to the CIP's submittal by the board of select the cipc has already created their budget it's up to the select board to amend it according to amend it according and that's why i made the motion because i'm amending it as a as a select board member well, of the CIPC. yes but i am the select board member of the cipc i'm sorry okay i, I apologize so, you as, so this is a select board amendment so obviously select board would have to second it then Oh, okay. I'll second it. Right, as a select okay. board. I'd second the motion. Okay, um, Kip seconded it. Then. So are we voting, then we would it vote would it? It would be the Board of Selectmen that select would board. vote it, okay. not the CIPC. Is there any further discussion? Um, question, Bruce? Uh, I just want to know what the amendment was. 
The amendment is to, to put a line item to as a holding for 125,000. Because I I mean or we can put 90. That originally we were I was thinking 90, but after listening to Matt, I mean it's just a placeholder, so it's not going to it's going to change anyway. So I don't know if it matters whether we put in 125 or 90. Can we revise it after go ahead skip? What what's it for? For the study. I mean, we're, we're, we're meeting tomorrow with the engineers, mm -hmm. and we as a select board and the as, and sewer commissioners are going to reconvene the sewer committee, how many other people we can get, and we're going to start moving forward on this because we have to do something. And plant is in tough shape right now, it's, it's, especially and, after this winter. And, and I'd rather spend my money fixing it than paying fines. It does not make sense to get in this situation where we have to pay fines. So, I, I would agree. I, you know, it's, it's one of the, I guess my complaint is fairly simple and it, it's procedural. Uh, we set up a procedure back in October for capital improvements, how to get that information to the capital improvement committee, get it approved by the capital committee, capital improvement committee, get it on Tom meeting floor. And, and here we are, you know, violating a procedure that right. and we, as we certainly knew back in October right. that this was a problem. But yeah. back in October, I thought I would have a recommendation from the Sewer Study Committee by now, and we have not. No, that's, that, recommendation, that recommendation had to be the Capital Improvement Committee by December 1st. But by right. the department, we have by, the, by the highway slash sewer department. Well, I think they were looking for the some sewer guidance. Study, the Sewer Study Committee is just a study committee that makes only rec recommendations. It, it, it makes only I would take a recommendation anyway. at this point. Is but that's why it's, we're changing the process. It's the not select the, board is going to move forward on this. The sewer study committee is not the, the sewer commissioners. Of the, course not. The highway department, highway slash not. sewage. But everybody department. wanted to get in a room and study this thing for you know, sixteen months, and and I thought that I was sitting back waiting for some sort of some well, sort of recommendation. And, and like maybe hey, this is what and we're maybe we at. failed, but. No, I'm not saying you failed. Oh, well, maybe we I'm did. I'm just but saying that I, you know, the whole reason that I we haven't brought forward a number is because we were. But what's, back what waiting. skips what skips saying is that there could have been a proposal from the highway slash sewage department for uh, a different kind of headworks for an auger monster for a of course for a study. rehab of one of the uh, pools uh, anything and and there was nothing. But I I think it's because and, they had and, no and, idea what to do. I think Bruce Mill knows what to do. I agree Bruce with Milne that. Bruce Mill could give you a list, you Keith. know, as long as my Keith. arm. Keith. Keith. Or yes. Keith. I'm I sorry. agree with that. I've seen the list. But there's, so. let's be honest here. So you got to start let's be somewhere. Honest. Let me just reflect on what I've observed in the year I've been here. There's been constant disagreement among the staff, the department, a public works director, <laughs> and the sewage treatment operator. They're not on the same page necessarily either, and members of the sewage of the steward, sewer study committee. So that's really where it got bollocked up. So we're moving forward. And we, I guess the selectmen are making the recommendation to do this so we can move forward. Because we have to do something. And it does not make sense for us to pay money to DEP. I would agree this would make sense to pay money to we, the uh, Board of Selectmen have the authority to call, call special town meetings and if we need a special town meeting to, then that's something we certainly can do. I don't know how quickly you can actually get an accurate number together so that you can call a special town meeting for that purpose. But as much as I hate special town meetings. Well, we're going to see what we're happens. In a hole. We're going to see what happens tomorrow night. We're hoping we did get two responses, which is some good news. Can you get an accurate number between now and, uh, what, two or three weeks so that the various committees can look at it to make recommendations for the I, I, I don't think so. I highly, I'm, not, I'm not certain that we can't. I don't think no. they're I think we can see what happens tomorrow night, decide who you want to 
go forward with and negotiate something. Yeah. I don't well, think I would just do appreciate a feasibility study in three weeks. No, no. the study no, won't no, be no, done. No, but, no, but, but, but getting a ballpark study. figure on what the study will cost. Yeah. There uh, a true cost. Yeah. But um, I, the placeholder idea makes sense. Bruce, you had a comment question. I was just curious um, where the hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars is going to come from. To reserves. I would assume. I would assume. We have, I think yes. we have 400 and something, don't we? Around 400. It was the last time I knew that we had something like that. There's enough to cover the study. Uh, this discussion is no less complex than the entire discussion that the sewer study committee faced for all those months. It, it's, a, it, it's not only a complex issue, it involves an awful lot of money. I mean, you know, that's... What's that? mm -hmm. I said it does. It does. I mean, Absolutely if you right. talk about the rehabilitation of these plants and the infrastructure, $30 million is, is out there, you know, um, and the town can't afford that. So that's where the sewer study committee kind of went back and forth. Like, and, it, and it seems to me, I only speak for myself, that we fix the immediate problem, and that's the South Deerfield plant. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, and it went round and round. Well, we don't want to upgrade that to find out if you're going to enlarge the system then can that plant you know handle it no sense of doing something that you're going to have to redo and you know so there's a lot of judgment calls by the few members of these committees and what's the best approach and the last thing i want to see is to spend another hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for another study that says you know oh well we took this into consideration this is consideration and it's 15 million dollars so what part of this do you want to do and you know it's like well, the engineering firms seem to want to do the whole thing, the whole enchilada, all at once, the whole 30, and you made a good point yeah. that why can't we do it, why can't we do small projects mm -hmm. on a regular basis and gradually attack, attack the, the worst problems first? Right. And that's right. why when we interview these firms and tomorrow, the point is to pick the one that will adjust to our needs the best because they do they come in with all the you know this is what it's going to cost of course, both firms we both firms we're quite familiar with i know and so uh, actually i'm very disappointed that there's only those two i know so i know so we're well, going to see i'm with kip that I, the and so you yeah, might see the Aga monster back on. thousand dollars on a, another feasibility study. Well, my my thought was that it was going to drive us to. You know, it would help us design the plans for what we need to do with that plan, um, and because of that's we know that's priority number one, right, Kip? I mean, isn't well, that it is, we're but going? that it, that drives the question that we constantly face. It's like, okay, so if they identify the issues right now, are they say, and then they'll say to you. Is that for the amount of flow that you currently have? What about expansion? Shouldn't you address expansion and how much expansion? You know, and then there's the whole thing about the old Deerfield plant being discontinued, and if that's going to happen, you know, so everything seems to be this big tangled web of what if, what if, what if. Zero, zero and, federal tax dollars to help. Yeah, right. You know, so. Which is just wrong. Are you no, there are res there are potential resources, state or federal, for not a study, but for you know implementing. Plus, we're still we're still uh, sussing out who pays for it as an issue. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. We're still working around the issue of who pays for it. The whole town, the town, well, and the sewer users, well, or we'll just, just the sewer users. Else that you can you can throw this into your uh, next two. Oh, yeah. You can, you can ask Trevor who happened to be up to the, to the house today for another reason, and we were just sitting around talking about cost of bonding, and we played with bonding 10 million, or I played with bonding $10 million over 20 years using a 3% uh, interest rate for the whole town. I, I believe a dollar on the tax rate is, is equivalent to about $650,000. Is that right. close, Skip? Yeah, probably about that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So borrowing ten million dollars over twenty years with a three percent interest rate. This is first year only, but mm -hmm. you're gonna pay back every year at least a half a million dollars, five hundred thousand. 
That's your principal. Your, your interest is $300,000 first year. You get $800,000, and I believe the calculation <coughs> at $650 for each thousand dollars is $1.25. So if you need to borrow, and that's for the whole town, everybody is tax. If you're going to borrow $30 million over some period of time and do it over 20 years, you're talking give or take $4 on the tax rate. You're talking about increasing the tax rate 25% if you do the whole town. If you don't do the whole town, <laughs> what the hell's left to pay for it? Right. I, that's so why. So until, until you've figured out what it's going to cost you to do whatever you're going to do and where the money's coming from, this discussion just goes no around it. Yep. That's um, what's I don't really agree. I think this is the trouble that the committee got into. You, you looked at everything at once. Uh, and yes, we've got to sort out those issues, who's going to pay for it, and we're working on that. And I have some information about that. Um, but I think you need to know what needs to get done, what's the best way to phase things, most critical issues first, look at a long 10-year capital plan for this, the wastewater sewer division, and then sort it out from there, you know, go have a phased plan from a, an engineer. And then you have to trust the engineer. I mean, at some point, you're just going to have to trust somebody, you know, and what they're giving you. But um, I think that's where you got stuck on the committee. You kept trying to address, well, who's going to pay for it? And what do we need? And can we just pull this out? And instead of like, you know, just going, we need, you need to set a price. You need to figure out the cost first. And you need professional assistance to figure that out. So. $10 no. What do you mean everything? Well, uh, it depends. I still it. hear people talking yeah. about we don't know whether we want to expand or not. So one of the problems, let, let, yeah, me, go ahead. let me just <laughs> clarify something here very quickly. Great. Because uh, the Sewer yeah, Study yeah. Committee has taken a little bit of a, a rap here, which I don't think they deserve. The Sewer Study Committee, we went, we went probably a good half year, three, three quarters of a year, under the impression that uh, the plants that we were talking about and the $32 million price tag that was sitting on that sewer uh, plan was for the needs of Deerfield. And come to find out that that was designed for, for a regional plant of an $8 million, uh, 8 million gallon uh, flow, uh, 800,000, excuse me. Oh, 8 flow. million, you're right. 8 million, 8 million is right. Uh, 8 million gallon flow in that, which we don't need for Deerfield. So one of the questions I was going to ask tomorrow night, let's define what we actually need. Are we looking at a million gallon flow, a two million gallon flow, or an eight million gallon flow? And, and I think we really need to focus on that and figure out what size plant do we need before we try to start you know, talking all these others. It's just ludicrous. Why build something that's, that's more capacity in what you actually need because right. you're going to pay a bigger price tag. So the sewer study committee, I think, kind of started off with some information that really did not fit. It was a little unfair. And it took us a long time to work to the point where we finally were able to figure out that the, the proposal that we had sitting in front of us was a regional proposal, not, not a Deerfield proposal, and that I think really set us back. We lost a lot of time at the beginning, spinning our wheels, discussing all these things, and trying to figure out the plants, the old Deerfield plant, the South Deerfield plant, and, and trying to uh, actually figure out what our real needs were. So hopefully this is a little clearer now, and we'll be able to have better, better direction as soon as we start our discussion tomorrow night. That's what I'm hoping for. Will it work? I don't know. And I'm only one person. And to that defense, too, the Sewer Study Committee, it was 14 months, but it really turns down to we met for about 28 hours. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I guess where I'm at now is I'm thinking um, that we would uh, we'd call a special town meeting in the spring, I mean in the, uh, in the fall, to fund the money for this. 
I don't know. No, well, right unless now, you want to, I mean, we have a motion on the right, table. We just need to vote. But uh, that was seconded, I believe. The yes, it was. Do, yeah. And I as held off on the vote. Doing an, doing an amendment here. And my understanding is for $125,000 mm -hmm. as far as a, a, a line item. Placeholder. Do you well, think it's a capital work? improvement plan? I mean, my original thought was to do 90 because mm -hmm. that was 123 That's, on the big giant plan. But mm -hmm. just listening to Matt, it's like this is just a placeholder. So why not put dollar amount doesn't really matter. You know, the other one was 123. Well, let's do 125. Mm -hmm. This is this is you know. As I mean, far as I don't the, know how you feel. Well, I don't think the CIPC committee is. It's. I don't no, think no. I'm asking you. No, I'm asking ever. you as a sewer, as a sewer committee person. <laughs> as a sewer study committee person, I, I would not want to respond to that because there's several sewer well, study have, committee well, people. Well, what would you we put up? I mean, this is a guesstimate. So, what does people think? Bruce Hunter or, and Bruce St. I mean, Peter's, Jack. I don't even have a copy of what the RFP is requesting. It, no one does. It's so, we we don't. I don't think there is one. There isn't one. We don't know. We're, well, this we, is a. We're, no we're, yeah, we're there was. Well, it was a request for responses, and right. I didn't it that. Yeah, there's no price associated with it. There was no price associated with it. Yes, Bruce. I'd like to just make a suggestion. Just follow the uh, bylaw at this point, and it reads. Uh, okay. Uh, the board of selectmen <coughs> and committee shall uh, conduct a public hearing on said program. After said public hearing, the board of Sele selectmen shall submit its approved capital budget to the annual or special town meeting for adoption by the town. In other words, it's in your ball. You can throw in 150, you can throw in 200. Right, but I'm you asking. still have up until town meeting to amend that. Okay. And you can do whatever. And, and let's face it, when push comes to shove, when it goes to vote for town meeting, the first question is going to be asked is who's going to pay for it? Who's going to, they're going to say it's out of sewer reserves, and everybody's going to raise their hand and going to pass that one. <coughs> well, then, then I, I. You can wait till next week. I would probably wait. wait. Yeah, I think yeah, if you what, want to, you want yeah, to withdraw your motion. If we we'll close the hearing, week. if we close the hearing, and we can amend it. Okay. From what he's yeah. saying. Yeah, it's right here. But my, question, but my question is, do we have to have another public hearing? No. no. Well, from yeah. what Bruce said, no. As no. long as we've no. had the public hearing, the no. select board can amend and it. And that we are going to amend it. Follow this, the way I read this bylaw, uh, follow this bylaw. It's after the The CIPC has made a report in the public hearing, in the joint hearing. At this point, you can amend whatever they say. And that to the as long as we've got Bruce on video, then we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I, you are on video saying that you are okay with this. The way you read. Okay. <laughs> so let's just vote that we are going to amend it, and then we'll come up with a number. You, you don't have to do that? Anything? No, we don't have to vote we, anything. We, you can okay. just withdraw your motion. Okay. Then I withdraw my motion, and we don't. We'll just amend it when we find out. More when we have more, more information, information tomorrow night. Okay. So now the question is, are you going to vote on the recommended? Yes. Yes. As, as it stands now. Yes. Yes. Well, they don't have to. We don't have to. You it's don't just have, we I just have to hold the public yes. hearing. Okay. All right. Obviously, when we put it on the but warrant. But I, I support all this, for sure. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Jeff, what we're doing today is just having the public hearing, right. and then we just put it forward. Inviting okay. more of the public to right. comment as well. Yes, and we want to comment, and we want people to be aware that we will amend it to include is, the sewer study. Is there any more public comment on any of the items that are on the yes. list? Does anybody want to speak to any of the items on the list okay. before we close the hearing? All right. Hearing none. All right. Okay, so uh, do I have a motion to close the capital I make, improvement? I make that motion joint? to close the capital improvement committee meeting. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, Opposed? I make a motion that we close the selectmen's meeting, the selectmen's joint meeting with the CIPC. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank okay. you for all your work. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Allison, thank you, Allison, thank you for everybody. rushing Good here. Job. I know it's really a drag <laughs> to get here, rush have. here from work. I thank you, everyone, for doing this over everybody, and over again. Everybody, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate your questions and comments. No, I just want to give you this. Thank you, everybody. Um,
Yes, thank you about this too. Oh, do you know about that? You know the dig it, right? Just for a quick you dig it? No. You come in and dig it. Just, oh, just yeah. for a second. Sure. Yeah. 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 What? I still do. Call me if you're around that Saturday if you want to go up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you dig it? Yeah. Uh, Give me a ring. Good. Um, yes, party. I am going to um, open the Selectman's meeting for March 14th, 2018 at quarter at 6.45 p.m. I just have a quick Selectman's um, announcement. Um, it's a community potluck diversity celebration dance party at the Deerfield Elementary School cafeteria on March 23rd, 6 to 9 p.m. Bring food to share from your culture and your vision of a more inclusive community. No nuts or peanuts. <laughs> um, this is hosted by the Deerfield Inclusion Group, DIG, the DIG group. And so this is a, a wonderful community potluck. I hope people will come. It's at the Deerfield cafeteria. Um, I hope I hope somebody will make galumpkis because I love galumpkis. I guess it's just you and I. We're struggling. Oh. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, town administrator report. She's gone too. Oh. Um, request for disposal of surplus property. Um, Barbara has some office equipment in her. Um, office that she would like to um, d be able to dispose of. It's less than $100 worth of value. Would you make a motion? Uh, I make a motion to approve the disposal of surplus property in the town clerk treasurer's office. Um, okay. Second. Uh, is there any further discussion? No. no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 She just has to have permission to do that. Sure. Um, I also want to just mention, because I know... Um, my son's just signing up, but um, dodgeball. I wanted to mention dodgeball because the registration closes on, I think, the 16th, March 16th. You must pre-register because it gets full. It's a limit of 30 kids. But um, So register now. Uh, Thursdays, March 22nd, 29th, April 5th, and Friday, March 30th. Or that must be April 30th. I'm not sure. Um, the DES gym, $10. So if you want to come... Register, see Sue Antonellis. There's forms up at the front. Wendy, are you um, able to do the town administrator's report? Um, let's just move forward. We're running very late. I will interject comments as we get through things. We've got okay. a couple of scheduled things coming up, and we have to uh, get through. Do you? Yeah. Um, yeah, but we don't have, it's only quarter of seven, it's not seven yet. Okay. Um, why don't you, we can do budget stuff now. I can talk okay. about that. We can do, move on to just, or, to do did you make a health, a board of health no. report or anything? Okay. No, uh, there really isn't anything. I mean, obviously people need to keep washing their hands. There's still stuff going on. Um, well, the only thing I will mention, I guess, I mean, I was going to wait, but, um, March 22nd, I got a call from the lieutenant governor's. The go I, didn't, I got an email from someone in the governor's oh, office yeah. asking. I forgot um, about that. Saying they were, well, I'm going to say this. The, the email actually said they're very uh, excited about what uh, the state has funded in terms of the Mosquito Control District. And the lieutenant governor is doing a tour and would like to <laughs> stop here and talk about that and other issues. So nice um, that's at 1245 on March 22nd. Um, okay. I talked to them, and I said, what do you mean by other issues? How much time? Blah, blah, blah. So um, they don't want it to be a big meeting. It's not a public right. event. It's not a photo op either. So um, I'm surprised. But if you look, I think it is what, a photo what op. No, it? they told me that. They don't want the press there in particular. What was the day? 22nd, I believe. At 1245. Yeah. They're going to. Give us a pat on the back for trying to come up with a regional solution that is affordable. Yes, and I th as I mentioned last meeting, or I had in my report, I don't know if you read it aloud or not. Let me just say about minutes. I need your help. You you were at the last two meetings, and yes, I was not. Yes, I will. I, I will do. Um, we'll work with, work together on that. Yeah, March twenty yeah. second at twelve forty five. Um, this. Friday at 3, we're opening up 
up at FERCOG, the um, parcel C. Uh, see I, if we have any proposals for that. Okay. I, right. I actually can't go. Is that going to be a problem? Oh, I, nobody needs to go. I'll, okay. I'll go. Um, uh, tomorrow we have um, Acuity coming in. That's a, an IT company who's contracted with the state IT division. Mm -hmm. um, this will be a free. They're going to do a, as they called it, a thousand uh, feet, foot review of our IT situation, which will keep us in good standing with the right. state around our IT grant that we've had for a couple of years. Maybe we can work on the speed of the email transfer from office to office. Um, <laughs> yeah, we will look at issues like, well, I, I will pat myself on the back. I got um, Comcast to give us a new modem last week, right. and they were out here Thank hooking that, that up. That should help us. Um, what else is going on? You are meeting next week at 6. Um, uh, next Wednesday, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I would I really like the board to stick with Wednesdays, well, um, even uh, when there is a conflict for one of you or even me, because... I'll, I'll be missing from that, because <laughs> it's our third reschedule of the budget a public hearing for the school committee. We've rescheduled it. I think this will be the third time. So I'll come over after I'm done. I got to get that done. Yeah. What do we have on the agenda for that night? Finish the budget. I will have a draft warrant for you to look at. Um, so that's pretty important. Um, I have. I think we have public. We have public hearings on liquor licenses coming up. Mm -hmm. Want to discuss with you whether you want a warrant article to request additional liquor licenses. Um, and I have a draft. I think from a council you, already on um, that. What time <clears throat> is the liquor license? A hearing uh, I don't know off the bat I generally try to schedule them at least at 615 if you're meeting at 615 minutes so you okay. get organized oh, oh that's already published that's fine I, I wanted yes it's to been be a legal ads have been in the paper budget though hearing well I gotta be there oh I know I know but can, I think I'm mean, trust good. no I know <laughs> I, I I just wanted to be able to discuss it a little bit but I know okay I'll take your concerns over all right. You can chew uh, my ear off here. Um, <laughs> uh, I understand that at four tomorrow at four, um, the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight is yes. meeting. Yes. And I don't know if you want to talk about what you're sure. talking about. Sure. Um, I don't. I don't have a full um, list of the agenda with me, but um, we're meeting at the Senior Center um, in Deerfield here tomorrow at four o'clock. Um, to discuss the trans, um, transfer since Marlene uh, is leaving us at the end of the month. Um, so I know she's put Sue and Meg, um, everybody in good standing to, to kind of for the transition, but we wanted to kind of start talking about, um, you know, discussing the needs of the seniors. It might be a good time to have a good overview of looking at what, what we can do, how the program is going. Um, can we get somebody in to kind of give us some advice on things that we could change to hear from the seniors what they're you know it's a good transition time so it's a time to kind of look and see what we're doing what we want to change um, if we want to change anything if people have ideas so any seniors that would love to come and discuss um, we'll be there tomorrow at four yeah I was hoping people would come because um, I had reached out to Diane Cornwell who we mm -hmm. had met up in Berniston she just retired she is willing to come in as a consultant and do um, like a master plan for senior services, which I, th I think is what would be fantastic. And, and she has, she's like Wendy, she's re ca very capable of um, writing grants. And what was amazing about Berniston is that they, the town of Berniston paid zero dollars for supporting their programs. It was all done on grant funding. And she, and when I talked to Diane, she feels very strongly that we have the ability to um, be a model. I mean, the state, I mean, one of the reasons the town governor's coming out, and mm -hmm. I was going to hit her up with it after, if right. the oversight Agreed. board is positive, is that they're looking for regionalization models that work. So Diane was already thinking of how she could put together a grant that would fund us for, a, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. comes up I mean off the top of my head I was thinking it would be very nice to have a five day a week program you know that right. kind of thing and and what 
impressed us when we were in Berniston was, you know, the ability to pull in younger seniors, right. middle senior, age seniors, and then your elder, elder seniors. And you had programs that fit both. And, and, and they, they mingled as well. And they so mingled as well. So yeah, you had the synergy of the different groups, but you also had the needs, like the 55 plus, you know, they're taking care of their parents and they're taking care of their grandchildren. So there's mm -hmm. huge stress. Yeah. And they're still working. A lot of them are still working. Then you have people in their later 60s, 70s that are retired, but they had skills and they had things that they could do. And you could match them with volunteer kind of programs. And, I mean, it was just, it was so exciting. And then you had your elder elders that needed more outreach and you were trying to, you know, do more service kind of things. And it, I don't know. I mean, I was just really impressed. And so if, I mean, there's no reason we can't do that. You know, so well, I, tomorrow I, night we'll discuss. Yes, and so I was hoping to come and advocate for that, and I, I was hoping that we could get more people to come that would be willing to say, let's, let's see what we could do. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are the opportunities out there? And not be, well, this is what we've always done. You know, we don't have any more money. You know, just let's, let us be the role model and get funding from the state, you know? It would be nice. So... so. Okay. Um, we just have a couple more minutes before we have... Do um, you want to do the appointments? There is no appointments. Um, there isn't? No. We've already did that, and that we don't need to. Oh, okay. The other one's just... Um, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. See the notes? The red is what's important. <laughs> the state appoints the inspector of animals? Yeah, we don't have to do the yeah. animal inspector. Um, well, we're almost at 7 o'clock. Just a couple more minutes. I'm assuming everyone is here for Ridge Road. Is that correct? Okay. We, we, we post it for 7, so we have to wait till 7. Okay. So thanks. Ask me questions. <laughs> okay. So what, anything more on your um, town minister's report? Oh, I was going to ask, ask me more. Specific questions. Oh. Oh. I, I could go on Actually, forever. Um, I'm afraid that there is, start, there is one start. thing that I, I was going to bring up under new business I anticipated is potentially there is another person interested in being a um, commissioner for the Mosquito District. So oh. we, last week we had voted me mm -hmm. because we, were, we needed five and there was right. one. We needed five people. But um, so I was going to have us, if... This other person shows up, then, um, or shows interest, then we could be um, write a letter of recommendation and um, for Greg Lewis, who oh. I had asked Conway to do. Mm. So, I would like to make a motion that we um, recommend Greg Lewis from the FERCOG as our um, Mosquito District he, Commissioner. Not, if not from FERCOG. Or, well, as an individual, yes, he works for the FERCOG, but he's doing it as an individual. Um, if, if this other person comes through, rather than me, because that's just one more thing. Right. I'm, I'm fine with that. Do we have to wait on that until you get no. more info? Or you no, I just need you to vote on it. So we got to get this, we have to get the district going. I see. You have to get nomination papers gotcha. in for the board. Well, I, I would recommend Greg Lewis as their, our commissioner then to represent Deerfield. He's very capable and extremely smart. And um, I feel he's being, he, uh, be that would be a, a huge catch <laughs> right. if he would represent us. So um, I'll make a motion to appoint him. I'll second him. that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. Okay. Thanks. Um, I appreciate that because if, if it pans out, that's one less thing I have to do. It's a lot well, of work. Well, he's just really smart, too. He's I wicked mean, he smart. He really knows yes. what he's doing. Um, okay. It is now. Not that you're not. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> you know I don't mean it like that. I know. He's, he I is think, really um, smart. Dick and Kathy would want to come up and speak yes. to you. I think. Um, yeah, we can open that. We have. Um, I, it looks like it's close to seven. So, Dick, why don't you come up? So you can give us the background, and Kathy, come up, and, and, and you all come up. It's nice to see you, Debbie. I'll start off. This is about Ridge Road. 
Dick, why don't you um, introduce yourself and um, just explain uh, how you got involved a little uh, bit. Dick Kalaszewski, former building inspector, presently Board of Health. The reason I got involved was uh, research on Ridge Road to help Kevin Scarborough, who is unavailable tonight. Uh, so Ridge Road, off of Stage Road, 700 feet long, okay? Did research on all the private roads in the town of Deerfield and all the roads that connect to other towns that are, appear to be abandoned, okay? And I'll start off a little bit with, if a road's connected to another town, it cannot be abandoned by the selectmen, okay? This is a dead-end road that was originally installed probably sometime 1950s that was made specifically for the water tank. There's a water storage tank at the very end that feeds the water supply for that section of town. So this is the reason it was there. The houses that were built and the way they got built on there was predates zoning. So this is the only road in town that predates zoning that doesn't meet the present grades of zoning, et cetera, et cetera, okay? What the people from Ridge, Ridge Road are asking, they're asking the town to do minimum maintenance and snow plowing. This road also is listed as a town road under Chapter 90. Right. So if you want for how, to- For how, many, how long? Is it forever? No, no, no. I mean, how, the how long has it been on the list? Oh, no, 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 the distance. No, the distance on the it's list. A, it's like 700 feet. It's like 0.14. I have it She's in, got it listed oh, here. It's 0.14. I mean, it's 0.14. I have a motion for you which has that detail. Yes, but it's on the chapter 90 as 0.14. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it's on the chapter 90 as 700 feet. It is 700 feet. I actually I'm went up there and did some measurements on it. Okay. Okay. So, how these houses got built up there were predating zoning. This road was previously plowed until houses changed hands. And I won't get into all that, but they stopped plowing. We changed highway superintendent, we changed occupants of the house, and the road got dropped. So here we are now, fast forwarding 30 years or more. Mm -hmm. uh, these people are looking for their road to be plowed. And Kathy Felton, is one of the property owners, and she has done intensive research. Massive amount of research. Massive amounts of research. <laughs> it wound her up on the zoning board. <laughs> and, then, and then we even got a recruited her, so that was really good. <laughs> so I, I met with Kathy once uh, to, for her to update me on you know all the work she's done and the history behind that, and yeah. um, and obviously it was a convincing argument to me. There's I think it just five houses on this road. If it, right, if I very small. That. And there's system. other, I don't want to get in, I'd be here all night if I was trying to explain everything mm -hmm. on the road. But uh, that's the crux of it. I think part of the concern, too, was the, uh, from the highway department was the steepness of it and how they get yeah. up with it different It doesn't meet the grade all. of right. any other road. Right. But the grade is not as great as stage road. Correct. Yes. As you're first okay. coming up through. So and that, I know. Yep. That's, that, uh, had discussions with Kevin Scarborough on how he could accomplish that. Right. Uh, he thinks using, he's using comfortable. Using a one-ton truck. Yep. And they would be, I don't want to speak for Kevin too much, but they would be at the tail end of the list to get their thing. But it's become an issue recently with other places that haven't been plowed because of our ambulance service and fire service. Mm -hmm. So they have a problem if their road can't get right. done. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Would you Would you like to say anything at all, Kathy? Um, I I don't really feel. I mean, we've we've been we got your letter, and yes, um, thank you. So I I don't think there is too much discussion from our end. Do you Did you have anything? No. Okay. I'm good. So thank you for your time this evening, and thank you to my neighbors and friends for coming as well to support uh, this. I had two pages. Of things to say, <laughs> not knowing Dick not, was going to be do. here, which is uh, awesome, yeah. even better. Uh, well, maybe you can paraphrase it because I, I, actually, I don't think. I mean, most of us have been. Uh, we, we read your letter. Um, 
I know Trevor. Background on yeah, it. and I talked to Dick myself and um, Kevin. Uh, Kevin is not able to be here tonight, but um, it seems very reasonable. Okay. So, why don't if you want to just make a statement? Excuse then. me. I, I think it might. I'm going to speak out of turn, but I'd just like to say that Kevin has been sick in the hospital, yes. and we all yeah. should wish him good well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. And I just it's wanted that horrible, to go out to the town that he hasn't he hasn't gone on a vacation. He's, no. Uh, <laughs> has some medical problems and he will be back soon yeah yeah he is actually getting better but yeah. it was very Looking scary good. and we were all missing him skip every 10th line well i think i'll skip it all. i think i'll skip <laughs> yeah. it all yeah. oh okay. I, I think that's fine well um i, I move that the town provide snow removal and other winter treatments and fix potholes on ridge road from the intersection of stage road for a distance of one excuse me, 0.14 miles. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you, Kathy. Uh, thank you for all your work. It really was very helpful for you to do all the research and to be work with Dick so well mm. um, so that we could get to the bottom of this, and it ended up being not really controversial. I want to thank Kathy Felton personally mm -hmm. for doing the research and doing it in a very rational, calm manner. Mm -hmm. yep. She was very professional in bringing her paperwork forward. I think that was a nice asset to help research Absolutely. this. And she was willing to take whatever the results were. Correct. And the, so. But because we were able to have all the information, it was, it was easy to very make helpful. the decision. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It made it painless, so it was, we appreciate it. I'm sorry. You yeah, probably prepared like you can't meetings. believe it. I know you. Can, you. you can come for other meetings, yes. We have yes, other things to discuss. We're going to need all that work. <laughs> Next time. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps I'll be able to uh, help with some of the other roads. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for Absolutely. doing that. I was going to ask. Debbie, too. Debbie said she'd be yeah, to Yeah, that's great. We need all the help we can get. For sure. um, we have uh, about 10 minutes before um, the library trustees have a discussion. They, so they didn't confirm they're coming. I'm assuming they are. I just yes. Came no, I, I actually talked to Nancy okay. today because right. I wanted to clarify what the was plan. happening. Okay. Um, so. And then um, we have executive session scheduled for 8:15. 8:15. Yeah. Okay. Um, we could. Do the budget yeah. item because he, he's not available to wait um, We can I, start at eight, um, and I can fill you in, and then we can hit the ground running a little bit. So we okay. could we could talk about the um, two well, budget I, items because I, I think we could probably get the budget items yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask a question about the planner position. Do mm -hmm. we know where we're at with that? Do we? Did you move? have you, uh, uh, Jeff and um, Bruce? Have you discuss, discussed the planner position? You have oh, okay. Have, what did you did you decide anything on the um, frontier budget? Uh, no. Next meeting. Well, next uh, meeting we will be covering all those. Okay. I um, wanted to hold off because um, I wanted to find out um, on this fiscal conditions in rural school districts report and some other stuff, and I don't. I don't know if there's anything we can really do. It's there not is. the school's fault. I don't um, think the report will tell you anything you don't already no, know. No, it doesn't. Um, and I was very disappointed, actually. Yeah. And I, it, I feel like it, yeah. we're going to these meetings, and it's we we got to do something. But um, um, Lynn Carey had had forwarded it to us, Wendy, the yep. template for um, the Supporting. Com the complaint complaint letter for charter schools. And I, and I wanted to make oh, sure. Oh, it was just to write a letter against the Chinese Immersion Charter School. Right. So I wanted Why to that one? And I guess it's a new... new. Uh, well, they have a request and yeah. a new request. I thought, I thought it had already been turned yeah, down. They, no, they, they, they came back. It. They, they come back every it. year. So I think it's yep. important okay, that... Okay, you um, want that for your next meeting? Yes, yeah, please. Um, well, we were hoping that we could vote on that tonight, actually. And, and you I would, vote to support the letter. I mean, I got a copy. Me to yes. Sign it. I make okay. a motion to allow you to sign the letter of support. I'll second the motion for Lynn Carey's letter. Template letter. Template yeah. letter. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, 
you got okay. the template re letter, right? I, I mean, you got yeah. the template. I yeah. can forward it to if you don't. Um, I do. So I guess I would make a motion to approve the Frontier what? Regional School Budget. There's, there's no. And uh, let me just find that here. So I make a, I make a motion to approve the Frontier Regional School FY 2019 yeah. requested budget of um, three million seven hundred seventy one thousand six hundred ninety six dollars. Okay. Do you want to second that, that? That does not include their capital plan for the things. Okay. Correct. Correct. I'll second the motion. Um, I All thought, those in Trevor. Did. Is there any further discussion? That's yeah, okay. He made she, the motion. No, Carolyn. Well, oh. Carolyn did first, and then he did again. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Did I duplicate the motion? No, no, no. Um, All right. Okay. No, Trevor. It's better to have Whatever. Trevor do it. Um, I should, all those in favor? As chair, I shouldn't be making the motions. All right. All those in we favor? Aye. Yeah, all those in favor? Um, Aye. Um, the, there is a meeting on, on March 24th at GCC 9 yes. to 12, and again, it's going to be on rural school districts, but Paul Marks Representative is, Mark. yep. is um, sponsoring that one. And I, I think we still need to go and yeah, complain Mm -hmm. It is similar to the one that um, Senator Hines did um, the other night at um, from Mo um, Mohawk, and it's the same. It's discussing the same report, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of bogus. Um, I read through the thing. Basically, the millionaire tax. They Deerfield's an example would be Deerfield would get two hundred dollars a student out of that tax. Oh, but by the way, there is a. Ta income tax reduction on the ballot. So if that passes, that millionaire's tax is going to go towards that. And so we might not even get the $200, which you know $200 is not enough. So right. it, I, I think we need to go and complain and say this is not our solution. And, and to commission a report that gives you that as the solution is kind of yeah. bogus and say we want something else. That was brought and, up at, in... Um at the Cape this fall at the school committee conference, you know, that was their only thing that they were hanging yeah. their hat on. And it just, it's not well, we got to rally together and stick together and, and do something positive. So mm -hmm. I, I would like as many people to go on March 24th. That's a Saturday, nine to 12 at GCC and try to see what we can do as a region. Okay. Um, I think it's important. I, I, I think, it's worrisome that we're losing our very great delegation that has gone to bat on, particularly on these issues. Yes. And I think it's important to, um, I'm not endorsing anybody, but I'm encouraging you to pay attention and look at those candidates that are supporting the municipal issues as, you know. Well, I, I did talk to Steve Kulik, and I asked him about um, school choice, increasing school choice by at least $1,000 or $2,500 or something like that. And he says there's just no way because mm -hmm. um, it's seen as robbing each other's school districts, which it is. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, I totally understand that, but it's been 20 or 25 years since that number 5,000 started. And it's a little bit crazy mm -hmm. for, you know, when you're spending $18,000 student to take in a school choice student at 5,000 and think that that's okay. I think we can also talk to Lieutenant Governor about these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, I intend to, that we need to have a regional solution of some sort. So, Anyway, um, it is 7.15 almost, so Nancy, do you want to come up and with Sarah and talk to us about the library situation? Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, so we asked to be put on the agenda tonight because we wanted to come and update everybody about the library expansion project. Um, and as everybody knows, in January 2017, um, the library submitted an application to the Mass Board of Library Commissioners um, to move forward with um, the building and design project that we developed um, and move forward to the actual building component of that. Um, in July of 2017, um, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners 
awarded nine uh, grants at that time, and then another 24 were placed on the wait list, and Deerfield was number 12 on the wait list. Um, since that time, because of changes in some of the other applications, we have moved up to um, number 10 on the wait list. Um, and so um, that precipitated um, the library developing a capital campaign committee in the fall, and we had preliminarily done some fundraising and um, to date, we have raised um, $675,000 in pledges um, from both individuals and um, businesses. Um, we have worked to do a um, variety of different types of community education to help people understand the project as it is to date. Um, one of the things that we have learned is that um, many People in the town do not understand the services that the library does have to offer, the hours, um, and also um, there's a lot of people that aren't aware of the uh, proposed project, don't understand that. They don't understand that right now we have a schematic design and then the next phase would be to move that into a, a final plan. Um, so um, the original award from um, that we submitted for was just under $8 million, and the award that the Mass Board of Library Commissioners gave us was for $3,944,338, and that would leave just over $4 million for the other component of the project, which we would hope that the library and the town would work to um, come up with those funds. Um, so as we have... Um, worked forward, um, we have been working very closely with the Mass Board of Library Commissioners throughout the whole planning and design piece and then more recently with lots of conversations with them about um, next steps. Um, approximately a month ago, we had two representatives come to our Capital Campaign Committee meeting as well as the OPM for the project um, and talked about next steps and um, they gave us an understanding of you know, how the projects would move forward. They explained to us that um, this is a very difficult project uh, for them. There's many moving parts. They have library projects that are finishing up in the old um, slate of projects, and then they have the new ones and allocating their dollars, and they have a huge spreadsheet that they're just constantly reevaluating as libraries stay in the projects or components of that change. But they wanted that to be very clear that it's not just a simple thing that they can say, oh, yep, this is when this is going to happen. So there is not a lot of um, clear definement about you know when we will surface to the top of the list. Um, and so our conversations with them were to determine you know, when we should move forward with the next part of the project. Um, and through conversations that we had with them on Friday and then again on Monday, overall it is their recommendation that we should postpone moving forward at this time. And they gave us a variety of reasons for that. Um, one, the most important one is the economics of the project and how it could change over the next two to four years, depending on when we come to the top of the list and would be eligible for the reimbursement piece. Um, they indicated that um, several of the projects that are recently completed um, had to go back and redo some of their design phase because of changes that had happened. Um, so those changes could be related to building costs. Um, and it's important that the architect is doing those projections and the design with current costs so that they can incorporate that into the design and have them be accurate. Um, secondly, they talked about, you know, there's changes that are happening in the library service model. And it's important that, you know, we be able to incorporate those in as well. So we're really, you know, looking at if we were to go forward with the design phase at this time, we could then incur additional costs down the road, and those would not be absorbed by the Mass Board of Library Commissioners grant, that those would be funds that we would have to come up with. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the, 
prior to those two meetings, the trustees had voted to go forward with um, putting forth um, a warrant on the town meeting to go forward and request the money to do the next phase. And so we've, we've had conversations with almost every trustee since Monday, and we've decided that you know we are not gonna go forward at this time, but we wanted to come forward and alert you to our decision making. Um, but we also wanted to make people aware of the kinds of things that we're gonna move forward with in this next interval of time. And we will be determining the next phases as we get guidance from the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. And that could be influenced by you know the funds that they're given this year, that they're still in a whole pattern. Um, it depends on what happens to the projects that are ahead of us. There's some very large projects that could influence us one way or the other. They could fund that project that could be utilizing all the money that they have for that year, or it could be they decide to go with three or four smaller projects, and then we would be, you know, need to be able to move forward pretty quickly. Um, the next part of the phase work would require approximately a year's worth of work um, with forming a building committee, um, developing the, um, moving the plans from a schematic into the final plan, hiring an architect, um, and all those things. Um, you know, the, we're prepared to, to do that when we, when we get the um, notice to, that they feel it's a good time to go forward and then we can come back and uh, make the appropriate um, notations. So, so what we're gonna be doing over the next indefinite period of time is to continue with our capital campaign continue to educate the community about the project, um, continue to um, you know, solicit funds from businesses and private individuals, and um, really to make sure that people understand the project, understand that we're moving from a schematic to a final design, um, and those types of things, and then we would be required to go back to the town to solicit a final vote to support the, the project uh, when we learn of that. So, um, Sarah, would you like to add anything? Well, you said it sort of <laughs> said it all. rambled. No, it all. I, I think that you covered everything. Um, Thank you so much. So, so, so questions from? I guess my only like question was, or so when you say you're going to do more public outreach, were you, were you going to talking about having meetings and? Um, well, I, the capital campaign committee has not met um, since these decisions are made, so I don't have anything concrete about how we would do yeah. that, but um, I imagine that we will structure periodic things. We've been working you know, with the Women's Club, the PTO most recently, so that we will still go forward with those kinds of things because you know, the education over time is what's gonna be able to help us build support for the project. Uh, we have also really fired up the social media component of the library using our face page and putting more kinds of things out there and we have a special project going on around social media so that um, so we continually are helping the residents of the town learn about the services there and you know we probably will have try to have more special programs just like we did over the past year when we had our 100th anniversary oh, yeah. so that people okay. you know, really can understand the value of the library and, and move to, to support the project as we get to that juncture. I think it would be helpful because like, um, I know I've heard questions like, you know, what, what kind of cost would it be for, and it's hard when you're in a schematic situation versus actually hiring the architect to do the building, but I think um, like when I talked to Sunderland, they tripled their square footage and they went to 9,400 square feet, but they didn't necessarily add any staff. I mean, it was years before they added two more part-time people. And so I think um, having discussions about um, how we're going to um, be sustainable and, and how we're going to add s services to the community is, is really, you know, would be important because those are the questions that keep coming up and mm -hmm. having and we've heard those yeah. questions and we have on yeah. the library's um, um, page you know there's a whole frequently asked questions that can give some answers to some of those questions 
Um, certainly, I know as I've gone to different libraries, and I was at the Hopkinton Library that just opened their new building in October, and they moved from you know a much smaller building to a larger three-story building, and you know they did not um, increase their staff. Um, they felt they needed to live in the space to sort of determine you know what they do need to have to to be efficient and. You know, I think the trustees and Sarah have, um, you know, we contemplate, you know, new programming and services, and there's many grants to help us accomplish that that we would want to take advantage of. And so, so some of those things are hard to project, but then there are some certain things that, you know, are easy to project. Um, and, you know, we're more than willing to field those questions and, and give the answers that we feel comfortable giving with the knowledge that we have. Um, sure. There's some things that you know you're not going to know until you're in that moment and closer in time to that moment. I think um, one of the things as the select board's initiative, we had, um, you know, we hopefully will have the, the church in a fairly reasonable time, so we can start working on that. But we had put some money in um, to do um, some work that would allow a design that um, would incorporate the library, the senior center, and the, and the existing senior center, and then this whole area back here. Because we, we wanted, you know, we, we, you talk about flow and parking lots and stuff like that. And, and truthfully, um, uh, Trevor and I, when we were down at the MMA, we, talk, we sat for a couple minutes with a marble person who was doing their library expansion. and. One of the things that they were talking about was um, putting heat pumps under their parking lot. And, and that sort of made me start thinking, well, we could heat the community center. We could heat the senior housing, whatever. We end up with senior housing and the library expansion or this town hall. And it made sense. And we needed to figure out some way to make it look pleasing to the eye. But, we, but Trevor was really... Um, had really wanted a walking area for the seniors and have benches along the walking area. And if the Mosquito District gets approved, we can work on Bloody Brook and get that cleaned up and have a better crossing between the elementary school and over here that um, in case there was a train derailment or, you know, active shooter or something like that, you can get the kids over here a little bit better. And well, so every day we know that there's kids coming you know, I know the uh, from the all library the all the time. You know, in many different directions. Mm -hmm. they well, we just wanted to, to we wanted to clean <laughs> it they're up. Approved or not? <laughs> That's true. That is true. Well, we wanted to clean Thank it you, up Julie. a bit. Yeah. So we, we were going to put some design um, money in to to figure out how we're going to make this area a little bit more attractive. And I think that you know, as we get to that phase of developing that final plan. You know, we, we have to comply with the Mass Board of Library Commissioners requirements, and there's yeah. many energy efficient requirements that they want us to be paying attention to. And, you know, so all of those things will be, you know, considered and incorporated um, as best we can. And then wherever there's things that need to be segregated, then, you know, we can work to have those conversations of how we accomplish that because they may need to be somewhat separate, but they yeah. may be, you know, as part of the overall plan or whatever mm -hmm. that might be. So uh, just thanks for the update. I really appreciate that info. And, and then um, at, at any time you get information and you meet with them or they give you ideas on time timing and, you know, just let us know as soon as you can so we can try to help. Yeah, you we know, will. I mean, there's been a little planning. fancy dancing this week that, I can imagine that we weren't anticipating. <laughs> This isn't really a question for you, but a question for people here and here. There's been some talk about have, creating a building committee, yeah. distinct from a, specifically a library building committee. I don't know what's happening with that. I haven't gotten any uh, proposal uh, well, or an we were article. Well, we could get someone to volunteer, you know, get some people to volunteer. Well, I think we have to think it through if you yeah. want to have that. Um, well, we have a lot of projects. Right. But I, I just throwing that out because I want to let you know that that's been under discussion, mm -hmm. not a specific library building committee, but an overall committee. Who would be on that, not in terms of names, but practices and experiences and all of that to be decided. But I don't know if anyone's bringing that forward. I've heard word of that, but no, I haven't received anything as a Warren article to, to create a building committee. 
And we would be needing to move forward from, you know, the planning and design committee to a building committee. And, you know, some of that may be people that were on that first committee for continuity going forward, but we have to really look at having that committee be um, composed of the appropriate people that can really move forward with the building component of the project. And right. mostly people wouldn't have enough expertise to be able to do that. Um, and so really? we, we'll need to make sure that we have the appropriate people on that. Well, if lay people don't have the ability to do it, who's going to build this for you? Well, we're not saying, I, I, I think we don't need it premature to think about a building committee. We're, I mean, they, what would they do? What, what's going now to this, be there? this is what I've heard as a general building committee general. to look at yes. all these right. building projects. I know that typically in, for library projects, they have their own committee. That's what I've seen in other communities as well. But I'm bringing that up to, to just sort of put it out there publicly. And what there I, are people in the room who've talked about it. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to say this, is, but I don't have anything. And I, what I heard from you is that you'd be looking to form a committee with people from the community and people with the skills to be able to put your building together. It's a requirement, I think, isn't it? It is a project? requirement. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've had multiple conversations with, you know, the private schools that they have great people because they do building projects that they could be part of that. We have yeah. lots of people that do construction in the town. I mean, there's yeah. all different components that we would want to make sure that we, we have represented That's so perfect. that, you know, we're... In light of everything that you said, there seems to be a lot of variables going forward, especially with the timing. And taking this project from a conceptual plan to actually hiring an architect, it would give you a good opportunity to rethink the size of the building and you know the way it's assembled. Uh, the original plans that I saw seemed to be a, a bit large and not very energy efficient at all. And I understand that the uh, people who brought the proposal for you didn't get into the nitty gritty because they weren't uh, you know, a definite plan, but this would sure provide you folks with an op opportunity to, you know, get a little bit closer to making, you know, having, looking at like that glass, the glass area, the size of the building, the ceiling heights and all those things to make it a more affordable project. Uh, and that's what the next phase is for. Okay. And, but we're not it, there yet. You're not there. Uh, and quite a bit. Sure. And you were, you had mentioned something about, or I heard the figure around $600,000 for the, the plans to go forward, would you people be willing to use your $600,000 that you got pledged for those plans? Well, we're not going forward with it, so that's not, it's... Well, I know, not now, but when you do get to that point of going well, forward. Well, those are just pledges. We don't have the cash on hand for that. Well, could you, could you get it? I mean, I'm... Well, many of those people have made um, pledges over one to three years for, you know, contributions to the project um, so we don't have that cash in hand to accomplish that okay. right. my understanding is that usually how, the, how those work is people pledge when you you sort of sure thing you know you've got your design money or you've you've got your building money and all of that but I don't know what I kind imagine of it would be a tax arrangements purposes donations too they would donate over several years mm -hmm. yes typically. exactly mm -hmm. it's something to consider but I mean I think that no, I, th that would be very difficult for us to, you know, try to to get somebody to give us a loan on that collateral, and that might not come true. Okay. Um, but the other part of what, you know, is going to happen this next interval of time is that we it gives us an opportunity to, you know, go forward and to continue to solicit pledges from both businesses and individuals, and you know, we may be in a very different place. You've been very successful so far, so I would imagine. Well, we're very appreciative. You know, every trustee, every staff person, everybody on the capital campaign have made, um, you know, personal um, pledges uh, to support the project, which is really important. And then we have some wonderful um, individuals and businesses that have uh, made the same pledges to it, the project to support it. Well, thank you for coming in to update us, and I appreciate the information. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll thank be back. <laughs> thank you. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is the planning position on our budget. I, I don't really have any. I mean, we talked about this last week, and it kind of fell apart, right? Did we? Well, I mean, Wendy's put a lot of work into this. Yeah. And Do you want to just? Um, I'm trying to figure out where sort we're of at. Summarize what you had talked about. 
um, on the planner position? Well, like I said, I, I thought that the town could use someone as a point person for applicants coming in uh, to guide them through the process of all the applications that they need, provide a package to give to uh, different applicants. Uh, I initially wasn't thinking of someone that we were going to hire, you know, part of uh, near full time. Um, you know, in after the initial month or two that they work here, I think they'd have the whole application package pretty much set, and then they could uh, devote time into, you know, looking at other areas of town that could use improvements with whether it be business development or stuff like that. But, you know, Deerfield still is a pretty small town, and there's limited areas to develop. Um, and so, you know, my concern was that the cost of this was getting, you know, I thought a little bit higher than I had originally anticipated. I think the figure was around $32,000, $34,000 with benefits. So I, you know, with that, it comes up, you know, it's getting close over to $50,000. And I just don't see that we're quite there yet. But I still would, I, I'm still very much would encourage us to look at a part-time person to do this. Um, I know it, uh, I saw Wendy's, um, what you want to call it, job description, and it was quite a bit more elaborate than what I originally envisioned, but uh, not to say that wouldn't be nice, but I think that when you get into it, are you going to get somebody with those qualifications to do it for that amount of money or the smaller amount of time? I don't know if there's uh, people out there that share their positions with other communities. Um, I, I don't know. I would. About this multiple times. <laughs> yeah. So, and the last time I was here to talk about it, I said, mm -hmm. We don't know. I was yeah. putting this out, sure. and I've reduced it yeah. um, to what forty-one thousand. I think is the last amount for the mm -hmm. salary at th at thirty hours. Um, I think you know you can you sure. go for little and get little, well, and then it, it it undermined what you wanted to do. Okay. This came about through I think I Dick Kalashevsky was the first yeah. one who suggested this. Um, I forget. I, so far, everyone seems to have wanted this. You, you were very oh, I, early supportive. I, I do, yes. But we, um, you know, if you want to speak to it, uh, Mr. Antes, who's on the planning board, um, uh, I know that they've been interested in it, but it's every, the interest has been, I see the need. I see what we need here. Yep. And some people will acknowledge that, some won't necessarily acknowledge it publicly. We need a we need that kind of professional support for our land use boards and our office over there. Both what you have described, um, the clear process, someone who can manage that, get more online so people can do stuff online, um, be able to have an initial um, consultation with somebody, understand our bylaws, um, be available to the planning board in the way that Pat Smith has been instead of Pat Smith. Um, and we'll, you know, the money that's been spent, $15,000 for those services will be going here instead. Um, and there's community development opportunities in terms of grants, whether it's complete streets or whatever else. I don't see block grants really being something for us. The housing authority does that, the redevelopment authority. But there are always new programs that come. I think a planner, I would want them involved. Um, they would have some expertise around infrastructure grants. We're talking about a lot of different infrastructure needs of the town. And just developing things. I've been to meetings where all these state development agencies are, I don't know where to, where to begin, helping local businesses identify opportunities. Maybe not help the town, but help a business in our town. There's grants now for farmers. They've had some meetings on grant writing for farm programs. And I, I see a planner involved in all of that kind of stuff, not necessarily only helping our boards and committees, helping the town overall, and also providing sort of direct assistance to our current uh, residents, small businesses, larger businesses, and that, helping us evaluate TIFs, you know, when they come forward. Um, I have stuff, lots of stuff on my plate that I would like to have someone else to help with, um, and um, so that's all the community development and grant stuff. But um, again, this was not my idea. But right. I fully support it. I'm not right. saying that to say I don't support it. But I don't think, I think if we don't invest in a, at least a half-type person, and I've said this several times now, you can go to a meeting. I mean, how many hours do I, it's not just being at the meeting, it's preparing for a meeting. So you have a right. two-hour planning board meeting or a, or a four-hour planning board, whatever it is, a hearing. Right. It eats up the time and, right. and zoning and conservation commission, as I've said uh, Steve Barrett has indicated to me, relative to this position, 
Um, he has been doing so much work on the administrative work for the Conservation Commission. He'd love it if we could lend that. And I made clear to him this position wouldn't be a conservation agent because those are different experiences. Yeah. And right. But he said, that's okay. I just need more assistance with the, you know, the administrative pieces. So I see that person doing that. I see no end to the things they could be doing, frankly. And I, I even think, you know, 30 hours to keep, you know, meetings, day-to-day -day work, um, losing Dick as the point person for that, um, but hopefully he's still around and we have his, his wisdom um, working. And I've talked with um, Polashevsky about it and how uh, that person could also be available to Dick and if they become more available talking to Dedek about possibly sharing costs, that kind of thing. So I, I see, I only, I can go on, but I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I agree with all of that. Um, I, I, it's really not my initiative, but I, I support it. So I, you know, I, I'll let others run with it from here. But I just feel like, you know, these are the kind of things that would help move our town forward. But if, if nobody, if if not enough people want to support it, or at least get it before a town meeting to see what people say, about it. you know, I don't know. Well, what, so was, what was the dollar amount? That for, you had Forty-one, to forty-one thousand. Yeah. Let me just. That's a salary. It's a salary minus. Benefits, right. Which we don't and know you don't have exactly. to expend yeah. all that, honestly. Uh, but. 175. I don't know. I just, I, I think it's important to have some help here. I just think that it's, there's not enough work there for somebody to be doing this oh, that long. I mean, there is a lot of different things, but I just. Well, I want, I mean, what I wanted to say in response to what sure. you said is if you remember from when we talked about it at a previous meeting, I want that there to ensure that if we have a really good opportunity and we, we, they won't work for less hours or less money, that we can grab that person. And I believe wholeheartedly we can put them to that, that use in that many hours. If they don't want to work that many hours, then we can get something out of it. I, I'm, you know, I'm just well, saying I want a placeholder, like we've talked earlier, and not well, put us into the, uh, to a bind of saying, Oh, I only think we could use somebody for 20 hours. And then they spend 10 hours at meetings that week. Okay, but and they go to a state meeting, which eats up a day, which was a great opportunity to find out about a program, network with the program staff. They remember us. It helps us in getting a grant later. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that takes, so I, takes I, time. I would, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not really okay with that, but I, I, I can digest that. But I have a big concern here is that if we bring somebody on board and – the job turns into more like I'm envisioning, and after a year, you know, it's just not a, the benefit that I thought. Are you guys okay with of eliminating course. the position? Of course. Well, it's, I, I don't want to. You, you know, I just don't want to be here. Well, you know, we really no. can't let them go because of this. You, and this no. is you know, they moved into town mine, and all so this. If, stuff, you, feel, I, you, if know, you feel strongly I, I enough that, about it, I really want to support the planning board and, and the other boards yeah. and Wendy. We and are Mike. we are playing. We I are can paying have someone working his salary thirty already. hours a week on two feasibility studies and two days. Consultants <laughs> and you know, I mean, there's there is a tremendous amount of work. And yes, maybe in the future. I mean, I I don't envision that only because I've been doing this work for thirty some odd years and I've worked with lots of you know towns and cities and consulting and that and I just see that there there is work and unfortunately and you know this very well and I know it very well the requirements and the laws and the regulations don't go away right and, 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 and I get that's that. so and, much a part and of to and anybody we need that's coming to, and in, we have to comply you know so. right but anybody coming into the town you know or it doesn't even be somebody coming in somebody who wants to do something in town, whether mm -hmm. they're a resident or a local business or an outsider, it still should not be as cumbersome as it currently is. I would is. say that so as a number one priority. Yes, yes. absolutely. It is. I agree. We, and, and, you know, from the, I see it on the planning board, a number of times people come in that are unprepared and, you know, we, we don't necessarily or we can't bend the rules, so they so end they up coming look, back multiple times for the same thing. Or it's it's, it's, it's it frustrates people. It frustrates us could, sitting there. We, you know? Since, since yeah. our boards don't traditionally go to trainings outside, we could also utilize their services to do some in-house training with people and updating on new raw laws or whatever it is, but that's what I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I really so. would leave this to, you know, Kip, Wendy, you, I, if you guys feel like next year it isn't worth it, I, I'm fully supportive of your decision to do what you want, but I, I just think it is a good, well, why, a good way to get started. Why don't we leave the, so. the, the dollar amount the way it is and, and uh, we'll move forward and if it goes through, 
town meeting. We'll see what and kind of people we get, the individuals. We'll see if and we need to spend that. Yep. Yeah. I if mean, not, great. I said, we can get a retiree we'll like you were talking about for 20 right. hours. Why don't you make a motion? I've actually heard from somebody. Um, we have one right. that's written out here, or not necessarily. Oh, no. Um, I, yeah. Well, I, I make a motion that we support the planner position at a salary rate of uh, 40, up to, to 47760 where are you reading? I'm read no, it says, well, that's an I, old one. She I, reduced, I reduced it. it. Oh, oh I, right? and you, I, you had it at your last meeting. Yeah, it's 41, 530. 41. That's an odd number too, but that's okay. All right. How many hours is that? There, that's Was, up to the 30. That would be up, up to, to 30, 30 hours. Up to 30 at hours. Grade, at grade, grade five, five, step, step three. three. Okay, I make a motion to support the planner's position with a salary cap of $41,530. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. I hope it's successful. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we're spending about 15 anyway, so. We are. Right. So That's it's true. not like. That's true. I mean, it sounds like a big number, but. You can back that up. Well, through, through the planning department, uh, or not, I shouldn't say that, through the building department, you know, they do well at being, you know, more than self-sufficient anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, if, if this person works out well, that uh, he will, the town will benefit more than that amount. Yeah. Right. Yep. I agree. I agree. I think it's a, it's a good um, Could we go back to the Board of Health expense? Um, that's uh, 512 5400 I just want to make a couple changes, a reduction. Um, Which ones are you on? It's 512-5400. It's the five number. Yeah. Um, it, where it says tick testing 4,000. I, I don't know how it got 4,000, but I'm, I'm reducing that to $1,875. And then what that is is 125 tests at $15 each. Did you reduce it to count? I'm sorry. One thousand eight hundred and seventy-five dollars. Okay. Um, it's a hundred and twenty-five tests at fifteen dollars. Instead of um, sending your tick in for two hundred dollars to be tested, what happens is we, the town, pays the fifteen, and the person that's sending them their tick pays fifteen, and they get the two hundred dollar test. Now, is this test only for a resident who's been bitten and they? Pull it the off. Tick they pull it that off. That bit them. Okay. Yes, it's and it and it um, would test for um, the 19 viral. The, there's three types of Lyme tests and and 19 viral, other viral things. I have the list. It's um, most of them I can't pronounce. But what, what's the date at the bottom of your sheet? There? My sheet is 216. 216. Okay. And then we're just going to add a line item. Um, for well testing, uh, five tests at $75 is $375. Um, Dick would like the, um, the ability to test a well if he thinks it's contaminated. Um, I mean, he has the ability to do it. We just would have to go and go to the finance committee, but he, he feels that this it's is the a, same thing. If he doesn't, if it doesn't utilize it, it just gets rolled. Yeah, over. it just rolls over. Okay. Um, so it's a reduction of $1,750 in total. So it's three, $38,596. What was that? 38, $596 instead of 40,346. Yeah. Make a motion to approve, reapprove the uh, board of health expense at for FY19 at 38,596. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Nope. None. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, was there one more budget um, that we hadn't addressed? I couldn't remember uh, when I was talking to Wendy. Is there planners? Cool. We, we have schools. Did, we, have we done the Deerfield Elementary? I think no. We, no, we didn't. I because we did that last week, no? No, because we the budget hearing was canceled. We oh were, right, we so we're on, still waiting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, that's right. What am I thinking? That's okay. Next week. All right. 
Um, uh, I don't. Let me just look at I my think that's list pretty much front here. Do you, do you guys think that we missed anything? Who? Oh. Do you know if we missed anything? Um, we have capitals. Under number five. Yes. What's that? The request for disposal of surplus property. Oh, no, we, we did, already did that. We did that. We're, we're, we voted yes. I was here. I think so. You might have been chat. You were gone. I was you're hardly gone. gone. You no, know, you left. That's we're like quick. Two if you're gone, we're getting okay, stuff done. So, um, you were gone too, actually, weren't you? I think I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think. No, I did come back at the tail end. I just ran for a piece of paper. That was all. Um, I think so that's we it. haven't done general highway expense. We didn't do general highway expense. Well, that's no. highlighted here. No, we're here. still. So that's we're still the finance committee still Kevin talking back, about or? that. Oh. That's right. Wait, I've no. forgotten about that. Wait, you're right. You're right. Uh, I'm fine with it. I, I don't have any issue. But if you want to wait, we can wait. And the test well monitoring maintenance. I think we had a question on the test wells, right? We were. Was that? Did you have a question? We were going to reduce that to 60 or something. No, right? oh. because you had asked to reduce it, and I said I didn't think. I think the reason why we can't we reduce it is to because wait it. To talk to you. Yeah, I thought it was be only because it was less money last year is because we skipped it. And not right, I and we we've. Why. I, kind of thought I can tell you what's going on. Okay. Do you want me yeah. to just jump to yeah. the chase here? Yeah. Right <laughs> so we went out and sought a, a other proposal, and I have that, and it's actually a little bit more than um, what we've got now. Not in, it's less than the budget. Okay. So I I was thinking um, we could definitely go down sixty thousand in to, that. Two sixty. Two six two. $60,000. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Maybe Going even once. lower. It's something maybe I Maybe even lower. Maybe even lower. Um, uh, keep money in there in case we have to install another well. It would be under four. It would be um, four, nine, three, five. But actually, if you compare the proposal I have and what oh, we've spent, it. it's about $4,000 more. But um, we're needing to change our... So you said you lowered that to sixty. Yeah, and maybe lower. I'm still examining so, that. So, what do you want to do with do that? Do you want to vote the 60 and then, I mean, if you can, if you don't spend it, it just goes back in the budget. Well, I think the finance committee. Like I think to the finance committee as probably as wanted to have the actual amount, right? Well, we can't go for actual really right. until we know what we have to deal with. But because um, the worry is to drill another well, right? Right. So, I, yeah, if you want. Well, I don't care. Do we? Well, I'll make a motion to reduce it to 60000 if you feel comfortable. I do. Okay. So I make a motion to, to um, reduce the test well monitoring for FY 2019 to 60000 I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I Aye. think Brenda's already got that. I yeah. thought, I thought yeah. that was what you were thinking. Yeah, I, I, I think we, but it's all right because now we're approving it. Okay. Just for your own information, she's away for a few days. We'll yep. be back next week. Yep. Um, that's why I wanted to do this. Just want to let you know, Diana's been in. Yep. Uh, well, she would have been in yesterday. No one was in yesterday. It was a very busy day. Not here, but busy I, working I'm on actually. what we're going to meet about later. Um, so why did we close Town Hall again? Listen, let me tell you what. Knee deep, Kip. What was knee deep? Uh, just not here. <laughs> this is not John Pachorik's fault. I called him. I didn't say it was John Pachorik's fault. The, I got up at 5 a.m. I didn't say it was I John Pachorik's fault. I know, but I. <laughs> consulted John Pachorik, oh. and I don't want to blame him at all. It was actually his recommendation that we don't close. But I was watching the but weather. But you wanted to be safe and sorry. I was watching <laughs> all the weather channels. That's your the first national, mistake. National Weather Service, MEMA sent the Han alert. There's no guy in South Deerfield that does a good job of that. Dave Hayes. Dave, yeah, and he, the Dave weather night. I gave him <laughs> everybody he, that closed in the western part of the state, other than the hills. He thought, he, what did the hills, they tell the hills us? Hills he says, I, must, of snow. I think it's going to be a little bit less than that than the couldn't, weather. Couldn't we? Though. Couldn't we just have a policy that you know town hall stays open, but once we accumulate seven inches of snow, then well, we can let people. Well, go. You're, but the you're heaviest on snow was. But the heaviest snow was supposed to come before noontime, and so. I, I well, did look at Dave. I did look at Dave's weather the weather nut page because I'm. I always. That's one of the ones I always look he at. He's, he's actually really good. I, yeah. got one I and so 
At 6.30, I text Wendy and said, let's close town hall because everybody is fairly consistent. And last See, week when we did it, what? it didn't even snow till three, so it cost the town. We could have paid for the tile removal at the senior center <laughs> what we spent the closed town hall. It's sinking you know I'm not air, let up. Sinking air. That's, Next that, year, that was the it's excuse. your turn, Kip. Okay. Oh, your yeah. turn. Yeah, sure. Buy some snow tires. I'm here. What are you She's talking to me? Already. I'm usually She's here. here. She's it's here. a great day for me. No one's interrupting me, and I get She's tremendous amount done. She's here from the night done. before. When you I'm here. That I was car here. Now, That's so. why. I'm, I'm loving it. Good. <laughs> I'm here. I was here that last snow I, day. I do apologize for closing, but I have to say that I do put a lot of effort into it, and I... It didn't start snowing till till 2.15 on the last storm, and we closed town hall at 2.30, so I thought that was really good. And I, I, over, up I, I overrode you. Up there <laughs> but here. that's why I called, and I said, we're closing, and we're going to close. I said 2, and she said 2.30, and I said, okay, yeah. and it was 2.15. You called so and said, here it. come the flakes, and she goes, which ones? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, everybody, okay. you right. know, to the we testament to town workers you, that oh. day, they were saying, well, they didn't want to go. They they wanted to work, so they, they didn't. It, uh, there know. is a lot of effort yeah. into it, and I just, but it was a true screw up, so I admit it. But okay. it was everywhere. It wasn't you, just. You want to do this the so schools we can close the day public public public. comment first? Yes, we have to do public comment, okay. and then we do executive session. Okay. So public comment? Anybody? Good afternoon, or evening. Good I evening. Guess it is now, right? Welcome. Thank you. So, at February 15th select board meeting, I stated I would like some of the town's issues put on the agenda. Some of these issues deal with policies and procedures and their unequal application in the town of Deerfield. An example would be appointments, permitting processes, and departments working outside their authority. I want to talk about the issues, not the personnel. It seems to me that some of the town's officials' conduct is emotional and rooted in personal animosity rather than the legitimate goal of running a fair and ethical democracy. Did you have specific items that you wanted to put on? I could give an example. I mean, I did offer to share this whole binder with you, but... I know, but I, for me to go through... So what would help me tremendously is if you had a, you know, a, a bullet point of this issue is, I'm having an issue with, and then you know, maybe a, a recommendation from you for a, um, you know, some sort of to solve the issue. Or did you did get you, the email I sent you at the conversation? Uh, conversation? What do you mean? I'm trying to think. I asked you for like a bullet point thing. You but did, I hadn't, and I, I hadn't. responded to you, and none of it's been responded to or even acknowledged. No, I haven't acknowledged, and I haven't replied because. And I, I did what, send an email to the whole board and the town administrator and the chief, and. With, not, with uh, what what I was asking for was like specific items that I could address. Um, sure, I, that's what I, was I can give you. I got one example at okay. least. During February 15th select board meeting, I asked to be put on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Kip responded yes. Carolyn, you interrupted Kip stating, well, wait a second, I am the chair of the board. It is our policy that anyone who wants something on the agenda, it is the chair's choice to have That's something true. on the agenda. Yes. It has been my policy, anyone that wants to put anything on the agenda can be on the agenda, but also, if there are any issues that people feel need to be put on the agenda, I will listen to them and put them on the agenda. I have since emailed you numerous times, and like I said before, offered to share my binder, and emailed the board of a conversation of Wendy degrading me. No one acknowledged receiving it, never mind responded. Did you guys even open it? Yep. You did, but I, but I did not. Um, I haven't listened to the whole thing. Okay. Um, because I've I've asked for specific issues that you could list to me, and then I would, I would try to help if I okay. could. So if you have some bullet point bullet points that you I could got a few of them. Us. The building department has ordered me to do things well outside of their job description, with the threat of DEP, OSHA violations, and the state. After a conversation. DEP instructed me to tell the select board to muzzle your dogs. 
OSHA questioned the building's department involvement in OSHA matters and instructed me, nothing the building department cited is true or a violation. When I asked for help, I am ignored. Other town building departments have been more helpful to me than my dear field, than my dear field issues than our own town hall. So Mike, what I was asking was that if you could put that specifically in a bullet point in an email, uh, yeah. these items, and then send it to me so I have something concrete I can look at and address. Okay. That, that was my request. So if you can, okay. that'd be great. I'm, and then could I be put on the agenda? Well, you're, you're here now. I, well, I don't know what you want for an agenda. I don't I set could, the agenda, I but I mean, show I, you're you, welcome to I could show you have for a public comment ever you know, in here. Five minutes. I've been ordered to go in front of the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. Why? Ordered or asked that you ordered, could go to? Ordered. Ordered to okay. go in front of the Conservation Commission. They were threatening me with TEP. I called DEP and asked. And they said, we don't even know why this is happening to you. Well, when you say threatened, what, what do you mean threatened? I cannot work on my yard right now. I've had my permit for my garage pulled. The chief had him give it back to me. I've had letters calling my house a junkyard. I've had well, Wendy well, tell me my wait, place wait, wait, is no, a you, mess. You've got to deal with one thing at a time. Right. Yeah. Okay. What, what I mean. how, how are you threatened with DEP? I, don't, I fail to see this connection here. How are you? Yeah, do you guys read the stuff that your offices send out? Of course not. Okay. I mean, you know, we would you like me to read some of it to you? We're volunteers pretty much. We don't uh, have to go through everything that they do every day. Well, you should look into it. It uh, I've been told I'm violating zoning by law 3721. Are you guys familiar with my property? Yes. Okay. Grading or construction which will result of a final slope of 15% or greater. I'm going to look at you, Kip, because you sure. probably understand slope mm -hmm. the best. Yep. What do you think the slope of my yard is? Without measuring, I wouldn't know, but it, I think it comes close to exceeding that. If you're talking near where that wall that you constructed near the underside garage? Nope. That's not where I'm grading. I passed in a plan to grade. I'm grading the yard, which is it, less than 1% of a slope. But see, Mike, this then, is not our jurisdiction, and that's right. Why I understand, it's and I've asked on Wendy the, for to help, go on to this, to and the she's. Agenda. I know it's frustrating to you, but we don't. We, yes, the building department is part of the town, but the select board do not have jurisdiction over our zoning and building commissioner. Who does? They won't let me go in front of the zoning enforcement. You won't let me be right. on the zoning enforcement. I thought, I thought you were asked to go if you had a, what I had heard. I've is been that asking if, wait, for me, instructions. Let me yep, if sorry. You, uh, what I had understood was that if you had a violation that you didn't, or a, uh, an order that you didn't agree with, the, the avenue that you needed to take was to go before the zoning board and plead your case like okay. anybody else. But I don't, have you taken that step? I don't I've know if you have. I've attempted to take that step, but I can't even get a phone call or an email returned from the building department. No, I think it's the zoning, zoning department. The I zoning have board. a conversation to me attempting to get in touch with the zoning department with Kalashevsky going many months back, and he did everything but give me an answer yeah. or give me an email address or I, give me I, any contact I information. I think you just need to request a, right, I, I don't know this, to be a fact, but would you request the time to be a, on the zoning agenda? Sure, right. I've been trying to do that, but I literally cannot get an answer out of them. I don't think that's where you get it, though, right? You get it through the zoning department, right, or zoning well, board. Well, the building commissioner is the zoning enforcement, enforcement officer. officer. I, yeah, and no, if you wouldn't, don't, wouldn't you, you go before the zoning board for a hearing? Well, you go to the zoning board if you want to do something. I think what they're saying, and I have to say because I didn't read it, is that they're, he's, they've given him a violation letter, and it's up to him. I don't actually but have a building, violation letter. I, I have a they're you building are, issues, not zoning issues. They're what? Oh. Aren't they building code issues, not There's zoning There's no issues? building code issues at my house. Well, open permits, I mean. There's nothing wrong with having open permits. Kip, don't you have an open permit for your house? Sure, but it's not been four years. When did you pull that permit? 2012, they said? No, not 2012. It's been three. Three years. Uh, less than three, but I keep working on it. I don't know any building code that says you can't be poor and work in your garage slowly. 
I don't know. But anyways, that, I, so I, my point was that if you could put that in a specific that one issue, not a whole binder and a whole okay, because it's hard there's for me. There's many to, of them, though. I mean, he's so citing me them. for OSHA violations. L list those. Where? Well, when you say he cites you, how, how, I don't. He how, might say something, but I mean, I don't. How is he? Did he, you get a fine or? I did not get a fine. So, I got a letter yeah. stating everything that I am doing wrong, and none of it is relevant, and none of it is wrong. I think it keeps kind of odd. Who holds them accountable? That's why. Well, I'm, if you feel so strongly yeah. that uh, you know you're being, your rights are being violated, you can have hire somebody to defend you. I, I don't see that uh, that's a problem. I, you know, if you're if you feel that the building department is treating you unfair, there's a remedy for that. So your recommendation to me is to hire a lawyer. Sure. Okay. What about the Ethics Commission? They're all public institution, or that's a public institution. You can go there as well. All right, thank you. So uh, just to recap, if yeah. you have those specific items that you could get me in a bullet point, I would be happy to look into it. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't have all the answers. I would be learning along yeah. the way with you, but I would, um, wouldn't hesitate to look at it for you. All right, well, I'd appreciate it if you'd finish listening to that conversation as well. I'll try. It's Thank you. 52 minutes. What's that? I said I would try, but it's 52 minutes. Of, I know you I know. had to sit through those 52 yeah. minutes of her berating me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. The last half hour I did not, I mean, the first half hour I did not hear a, a berating. Yeah, better. I actually feel very pleased in listening to yeah. it. It's fine. So I did listen to all okay. of the conversation. You did? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did I. I did too, and I feel like it was appropriate response. So. There's not much okay. to say. Yep. All right. So um, we need to go into executive session. Yep. yep. And we will um, not. Uh, I so move the select board enter into executive session as allowed by MGL uh, Chapter 30A, Section 21A6, to consider the purchase exchange lease and value of real property as determined. An open meeting may be detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the body. We will not. Um, come back into open session. No, we will. Se oh, we will? <laughs> yes, we, we may come back, and, um, and that would likely be in about half an hour. Oh, okay. Because we may be, oh, make we decisions that you need decision. to vote. Yeah, okay. so if you want to, I'll get that in a minute. Second. <laughs> oh, no, you, okay. And you have to, okay. All, all those in favor? Aye, okay. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Henry Camosa. Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, I want to make a motion. I, I hereby move that the Board of Selectmen authorize Carolyn Shores Ness uh, to execute and enter into any and all do, um, enter, enter into any and all documents necessary to um, help me effectuate. 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 Thank you. <laughs> effectuate the sale uh, of the uh, property, which is that certain parcel of land as shown on Assessor's Map 168, Lot 21 being more particularly described as lot two on plan recorded with the Franklin County Register of Deeds as plan book 140, plan 41, consisting of approximately 9.276 plus or minus acres, more or less, book four, uh, 5466, page one, and book 5466, page nine, off Merrigan Way, Deerfield, Franklin County, Commonwealth of Massachusetts to New England Natural Bakers Inc. and or N E N B Realty, comma LLC. May I have a second? I second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Hear, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We also um, want to make a motion to um, approve and sign the twelfth amendment to purchase. Um, purchase and sale agreement between the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts, seller and uh, New England Natural Bakers, Inc. Buyer. I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Nope. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And make a motion to uh, sign and approve the uh, quick claim deed. I'll second that motion. Property. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. I will pass. Oh, mm -hmm. oh no. Do you have the originals? I mean, you can. I've know, got the originals. Do you have them? Oh, okay. Um, Do you want more signatures? 
Do you, you want more signatures? signatures? No, you, sign uh, you sign. Um, well, we can sign. No. These. Oh, you want to sign now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. Just take two seconds to go over what, what's going on in the next couple days. Oh, you know what? I left my pocketbook in there with my agenda. Um, we've canceled our meeting so many times. I have a one o'clock tomorrow with you, right? Um, with the guy from the housing authority? Yeah, for the housing authority. Um, I, I just, it's not good timing. I just have so much on my plate okay. right now. But um, I have. Um, well, it's okay. 10 o'clock. Oh, we were going to do the other thing. Okay, do you still want to do that? Um, let's, yeah, and l let's go forward with that plan. Okay. Both, both of okay. those plans, okay? All right. The 1 o'clock and the visiting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cause the, 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 here's just the thing. I mean, I, okay. It's another 12-hour day for me. I know. But it, I know. It, nothing I can do. I have to be here at 10, and then we've got the meetings tomorrow night, and then... I wasn't supposed to meet with you at 10, right? That was the, just the computer stuff. Right. Okay, because then we have a 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Okay. Tomorrow is just... Bring around the, the clock. We, yeah, 4 o'clock. I'll, I'll go by briefly. <laughs> but just to be clear, expectations about what tomorrow night is about. And this is the way that it had been recommended by our person in the community who's a great expert in this stuff in this field, that we take this as a two-step process, that we start with inviting in consultants. You suggested some names, and I approached all of them, um, sent out the RFR, which is a request for responses, not proposals, just responses. And they're going to come in and with, and tomorrow night, and one's at 6.30, one's at 7.30. We need to start right at 6. So um, I want to just review with everybody who's here, give them the questions that I've worked up with this person. and. Um, and uh, use those and just kind of go around and do that. I'll hand that all out to everybody. I've, all, I've emailed all of this to people. So, uh, and then we had a quickly, and I've asked them, you know, that it was recommended that we have two separate nights, which is very difficult to arrange with all these people. So I've asked the consultants to just leave and so that they're not being privy really to what, what each other is saying, and they agreed to do that. So, okay. um, and I don't know if we're going to have the coverage or not. At any rate, we'll hear from them, and they'll, we'll take it from there. We'll get more advice from our, our, our local Wonderful person. person. Yeah, and, um, yeah, see if we can move towards getting some kind of a, an estimate and how we would approach all of these questions that came up tonight. Can we phase this? What's most critical? How do we determine that? Yeah. How can you help us figure out the funding over a period of time? Um, Etc. If you read the newspaper, and I keep saying this to people, I'm surprised how few people read. Every town is going through almost exactly these same issues. Well, because what well, happened is the Clean Air, the clean no, air no, Water Act aging went plants. through, yeah. came through in the 70s. It was 72 right. or so. So all the plants up and down the Niagara River are exactly the same age. Yeah. But one right. of the things that I'd, I'd like to add to this conversation is that, you know, we spent a, a lot of time at the Sewer Study Committee and we really did cover an awful lot mm -hmm. of topics, you know, from how to how to price, how to bill. You know, we talked, we spent many of hours just talking about different ways to send bills to people and stuff like that. And it wasn't just the plant, but the bottom line is that, you know, the town has spent money in the past and we're gonna have to spend more money in the future. And I'd hate to, I don't want a discount looking at everything, but I'd really like the focus of this to be do something for the South Deerfield plant as soon as well, we can. Well, I don't think we have you know. a choice. Uh, I, I, right, but I, I focus know. on the study yeah. looking at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. so, you know, that, that's the direction that I've always kind of pushed for with anybody. Is that you, you, we can look at everything, but knowingly, we're not going to do everything at once. So we don't need that study completed. Well, what we need is, this is what we need to do on the South Deerfield I plant and I agree, go forward. and we have to focus on it. Just like we focus on the EMS, we're yep. going to have to focus on this. And so that requires all three of us to go to the but meetings. I, 
and yeah. make a decision. But maybe we're in agreement, but I, what I heard was, and I agree with, we also need more information about what, you know, looking down the line, not just that plant, but yeah. what other things are. Not necessarily yeah. a full born assessment of the conditional, but what can we get from that? Also, what can we get from previous studies? Right. What can be gleaned from well, that that you don't have to repeat well, in, in this assessment? One of the things so, that you, I yeah. found that our board was getting caught up in, and I'm gonna relate it to the computer age, that our system is not really antiquated, but it's old, you know, the parts are old. And there are a lot of new technologies coming out, but you can't just wait for the new technologies come out because they're constantly changing. They're it's like computers. Changing. So if you wait to buy that new TV this June, by the time you come out, they got a different one out. And then there's another one coming out in September. So you have to yeah, kind of say, all right, this is what we've had and this is the best sufficient. that's available right now and it's sufficient. Yep. Let's move in this direction. You I know? agree. Yep. And, and anything that we can do, I, I like one of the, the technologies that I learned about was this bubble aeration. You know, mm -hmm. now we have these huge motors that burn a right. lot of electricity and they get plugged and so forth. Well, the bubble aeration, you know, I don't really know if it works better or not, but a lot of people say that it works as well as the other things. You know, something like that, going down the road, energy. a lot less energy and a lot less maintenance. And, you yep. know, just, you know, Let's, yeah, you don't have to I be really to knowledgeable about these things. Some, some of the things are just common sense. You know? Correct. No decision is a decision, and that's, that's why right. we have to make yep. a decision. And yep. I am... Sick of okay. pushing it down the line. We have to. We have. We are getting to the point. Where we have to make some exactly. decision. So. So, so make a motion to adjourn. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> Second. Nine oh six. Okay. Well.